Okay, so we open as always. We get scenes from past episodes. We're not going to go into that because we already know what happens. We get the theme song. A song opens up the show. It's my world. It's my world. And we open at Sheena and Brock's Marina Del Rey pad. Can we please get a different shot of that Marina Del Rey backyard? Like, I'm so, can we just get a different angle? Can we get an over the head shot? It just, I'm, I'm just, the one angle from the right, I just need another angle. It makes me sad each time I see it. But congratulations to Sheena and Brock. They got a new multi-million dollar home in the Valley. So that's amazing for them. But anyways, Brock is... Uh, uh, playing with Summer Moon. He's like, Summer Moon, what you doing, Bubba? Ah, don't call anybody Bubba. He's like, no more Bubba's on the show. And Summer's like, I'm rolling. And he's like, are you at Coachella? No, he's like, are you happy with your, what's it called? And Sheena's like, it's Play-Doh, Brock. Play-Doh? Come on. Did you not have Play-Doh in New Zealand? And he's like, we had mud. We had mud. I'm telling you, I said this a couple weeks ago. We literally need a Muppet Babies with Brock in New Zealand because this kid's playing around with mud and dating like pig farmer's daughters. I need the early adventures of Brock, of Brock Davies. Like this man is playing with mud. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff. Anyways, we go over to Schwartz's uh, greenhouse. Hello. No, it's his apartment, you guys. And this is the only time we see one of my new favorite characters, Joseph. It's Joseph. Anyways, um... <laughs> We see the turtle to some figure on the table, on the top of the, you know, anyway, in the kitchenette with Joseph, who's wearing a bucket hat. She's, she's quirky, and they're using a machine. And Joe's like, I'm new to this. And Schwartz is like, you don't know juice. And he's like, she's like, go, 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 go. Where did the pulp go? She's just, oh, so much action. And they show the juice going into the glass and the pulp squeezing. And it like winds up in this kind of yellow, just yellow, gross pile. It's kind of like what Brock used to play with in New Zealand. And Joe's like, oh, oh, it looks like butter's poop. And Schwartz is like, yeah, it does. And we see butters on the other floor, just looking so ashamed. That, that, you know, she got called out on national television. Butters was like, that was between us, asshole. Don't use me in your scenes. Also, wait, what? Butters poop looks like what was coming out of that machine? We got to get Butters checked out. Oh, like, also, like, did Butters get into Tom Sandoval's laxative pills like Maya? Like, I'm truly, like, save Butters, dude. I was just thinking about Dog the Lizard. Remember season eight when they had, when Schwartz had Dog the Lizard? And they had him for less than a year and they died. And then they did the lizard funeral. I truly, that was like the jump the shark moment for the show. I always call it the, the, you know, jump the dog moment because I was like, oh my God, am I literally watching a lizard funeral? And now it's gotten, <laughs> it, it revived itself. But at what cost folks, at what cost? Anyways, um, the song continues. Don't let me wait. Cause I got no patience here at I want it. And we go to a park and Lala, Katie and Allie are getting a personal workout with booty bands. I hate working out folks. It sucks. And uh, everybody's like, Oh, let's do it. Working out, working out, working out. And the instructor's like, how does that feel? Katie, do you like it? And Katie's like, no, no, no. Katie, <laughs> Katie, Katie looks like the little girl from Beetlejuice. She's like, no, I don't want to do this. Winona Ryder. Katie and I talking heads like, I don't understand all these fitness people that talk about how they're addicted to the endorphins that come with working out. It's like they never drank wine or experience what real true joy and happiness is. Katie gets it. That's what I, dude, even when I, even when I'm on my game and I'm working out, there's never a moment where I'm like, oh my God, I'm loving this. I'm getting in touch with myself. You guys, I ran a marathon like 10 years ago and uh, I, it. Like there was never a training day. There was like, I did all, I did everything to prep for it. There was never one moment of joy. The big joy was after I finished the marathon and I never did another marathon again. But like, sometimes I'll like the hike that I do, but like afterwards, <laughs> like I'll be like, yeah, but there's no joy in going up a hill. There's no joy. The only joy is when you get to the top of the hill and your breath starts getting back under control. There's joy in that. But the actual journey, you're like, oh, fuck, I'm in a park with booty bands. Give me a break. Anyways, Lala's like, hey, guys, what's up? Are you still coming to the. And little Lala's like, give me water, bitch. Yeah. And Katie's like, the water tasting? Yeah. We flash back to last week's episode where Lala was talking about the water sommelier. 
uh, which by the way, I, I've watched this guy's work on TikTok a, a bunch. And I, I was like, these, these reality shows when they get little guest stars, I was like, oh, this is funny. But anyways, Lala's like, I invited everybody, including Tom Sandoval. And then we jump over to Ariana and Sandoval's house and Sandoval's in his workout room, just walking on his treadmill. This would be the part of the show where you would get the scratch and sniff snicker uh, sticker and you would just smell and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, it's all the dirty socks that you've ever had in your life. And that's what that workout room's got to smell like. Because anytime we see Tom in that house, he's just working out and that white noise machine, we see that's out there. Anyways, Ariana's downstairs in the kitchen. She's like, Maya, Maya, your aunt's here. Maya just probably just scared. Maya, I mean, justice for Maya. Maya's had the toughest year ever from 500 laxative pills and eating hair dye to eating chicken satay skewers. This Maya is just like, can't even tell which, like, what, what day is it? Oh my God. Anyways, Anne's there. Anne's like, I'm here. <laughs> Anne is just like this bright ray of shining light. Anyways, um, they're, you know, she's really dressed nice, Anne. And I guess it's like kind of for an for an interview. It's like in a black pantsuit. And she's like, good to see you. I came professional prepared. And Ariana's like, oh, wow. Well, I have to pop upstairs real quick. I'll BRB. And Ariana's like, yeah, I got to do some stuff on my laptop. Anyways, Ariana's like, things might get a little rough with my roommate if I poach his assistant. But I mean, he didn't respect me enough to, you know, not fuck my friend when I was at my grandma's funeral. So I should be stealing his assistant gleefully. Now, this is a weird storyline, right? And I told you this from the beginning. I told Especially after I listened to that Nick Vile podcast and it was revealed that he had a new assistant Schwartz talked about. And I was like, oh, what happened to Anne? I've realized it wasn't her. And then I speculated that Anne either quit or got fired. I was like, that has to be it. And then once I saw that part of the season, I said, I bet that's going to be a season in the show. Well, we are here, folks. Uh, so she is interviewing with Ariana. Now, I will say this. I'm not all down on Tom's handle 100% of the time. In this situation, I think I get what Ariana said. I get it. Tom did not give a rip about anything that you do. This also feels a little bit of like a story plant, like kind of producers edging this on because I don't really believe some of the reality of this, but also I like, I know Ariana would be the better person to work for, obviously. And I know that Anne truly likes Ariana, but it's a weird situation and I can understand how Sandoval would feel if somebody was doing this or interviewing, like I would probably fire the person I would. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, that probably isn't going to work out. Like that's a little weird. Like Anne doesn't have to be Tom's friend or best friend. And obviously she's turned into a caretaker role sucks, but then Anne needs to quit herself to actually interview in the same house is just Oh, weird. Because if this was reality, you'd be like, Hey, let's do this somewhere else. So Tom, there's not even in the same house, but this is a reality show and this is what we do. So anyways, Anne dashes up to Sandoval's workout and Sandoval's like pouting in his workout room. He's like, Oh dude. Oh man. I got my pump on dude. And Anne's like, hi, I just got in. I just wanted to check in. I was going to help Ariana with some stuff. And I'm, you know, see if I know anybody in my assistant community. I love the fact that there's an assistant community. It feels like Smurf Village or something, just a village of assistants that Anne is a part of. I love that. I love the thought of an assistant community. Anyways, she might be hiring people. So, and they see, you know, they let us know that white noise machine is out there, right? And Sam was like, cool, dude, dude, cool. And you just tell he's just pissed. And she's like, you good? And he's like, yeah, okay, okay. And Anne dashed down to the kitchen. And so they're doing like this cutesy, interview kind of thing. And it's like, Ariana's like, okay, so you get here at 11, you're here all day, whether there's stuff to do or not. And she's like, yeah, good for you. You just get paid to hang out with Maya and just chill. And Anne's like, yeah, <laughs> but it does have its cons. Like sometimes I have to pick up his dirty socks and underwear and there's just so much pubic hair. He just shaves everywhere. It's a lot. <laughs> and Ariana's like, well, I don't think that's normal. And she's like, yeah, yeah, please help me. Get me out of here as quickly as possible. It's like those scenes in movies when somebody's been kidnapped and they like take him to like a diner and they're like, I want to leave. But if you get, if, if you let anybody in this diner, let on the fact that I kidnapped you, uh, it's over. And then the person like puts on a napkin, like help me. That's what this scene reminded me of. Anyways, Ariana's like, 
you know, talking about it. She's like, I know he wears that shit sometimes for like days in a row. And then he would wonder why I want to fuck him. You know, talking about ours, bro. And actually this was a cute talking head because Ariana was looking at it. But the thought of Tom isn't is so put together. It is so like shaving bro makeup, putting on the Zara pantsuit. All of this is like so heavily thought out and stylized. But then inside, you know, in the drawer boxer area, it's a bottle of funk. It's just like a fun, like a Vincent I says in the thriller, a funk, a funk from a thousand years ago. That's what Tom's um, nether regions must be like. Just a funk, just a funk, funk. He's like the Conahe of reality shows down there. Um, and also, I was talking to Rebecca, and it's just, it's wild. Like I said, because Tom looks great. Tom's so well put together. Everybody still wants to fuck Tom. Everybody thinks he's hot still. And she was like, well, but um, his insides have just got to be rotted. Like he's taking all those laxative pills, the water pills, the app. Like inside must be wild. And I was like, no, dude, I don't believe that. I mean, he, he, I don't know. But at the same time, how many laxative pills can one body take? It, I don't, anyways, a, a conversation for another day. Anne is talking to Ariana, Ariana. She's like, I look forward to the times when I get to do more administrative stuff. Like that would be amazing. And now they show Sandoval wandering outside his room upstairs. Like where was the sound machine? bro this is like a total producer setup of like tom you got to get out in the hallway right now dude you you're not gonna even believe the conversation i need you to hear this dude i'm tipping you off right now but this is a part that i don't really believe because i feel like you got to reality of this it's upstairs you hear a camera guy moving around when you're upstairs this is, I, I don't fully i mean i know it's but it's like, Tom, but also Tom, like his look is just so intense. He's like, the fuck's going on down there, dude? What are they, are they talking about my funk and my funk? Ariana knows where the bodies are buried. She knows that I sometimes. Where the hell? Away! Anyways, uh, it's like, I would love to work for but i'm also like if it doesn't work out i totally understand like no worries i love you yeah and he's like yeah i love you so much i also have a feeling ariana would be potentially more of a tech you know like tom sandoval has pool parties and stuff i have a feeling i don't uh, anyways this story i don't think Anne, i don't think ariana really was ever truly fully considering Anne. not because she doesn't like Anne or Anne doesn't do a good job I just feel like Ariana was like, I don't even know if that's worth it. It's just not worth it. I would imagine that it just wouldn't be worth it at the end of the day, if that makes sense. Anyways, Sandoval is just still eavesdropping sneakily. He's like, oh, dude, yeah. I mean, cheating with Raquel, Tom would have found out way earlier because he would have sneaking around, slithering like a snake. Sandoval, I mean, Aria, Ariana already got all of our friends, dude. Now she has to take my assistant. You can have anybody she wants to work for her, dude. And she picks Anne. He genuinely seems hurt. He seems more hurt about this than the actual Sandoval situation, which is very telling. And also, Ariana didn't get all of the friends. And Sandoval knows that. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, Ariana's like to Anne's like, obviously, right now, things are weird with the living situation. So maybe it's like not tomorrow or next week, but maybe it's once I'm in the house, out of the house. And so they're like, okay, we'll keep in touch. And then I was like, well, lucky for, you know, anyways, it's just cute. So now we go back over to Sheena and Brock's and we have a visitor arrive and Brock's like, hello. Hey, cutie. And it's Schwartz, another fucking plant. He's just like, hello, parents. Huh? I brought Summer a hat. He does a little baby voice. And Brock's like, look at this. He got you a present. Where is Schwartz buying all his like, plants like does he have some kind of plant dealer it's like yo 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 give me give me a fern dude yeah give me one fern yeah give me give me two of the but i love that he and there's just a shot of just schwartz standing at the screen door with a plant it looks like a like the new face in horror and schwartz is like uh yeah what's up man and he's like hi summer and brock's like summer look you want to try your hat on that old schwartz gave you and summer's like no i don't want it leave me alone 
I've seen butters poop. And he, uh, anyways, Schwartz is like, I got you a plant. I give everybody plants. And she's like, thank you. And Brock's, uh, uh, anyway, Schwartz is like, by the way, today I opened up Instagram and like the first six posts were all people holding their stomachs like this, like having kids. And I felt like it triggered my biological clock. And a talking head Schwartz is like, it's like father time is knocking in the back of my mind. Hello, hello, you're not getting any younger. This fucking Instagram, Schwartz, just get off, man. Like, get off Instagram then. you. I, this is also Schwartz's thing he does in every scene. And what you're about to see him do it in this one is that he'll go into another situation and it'll be like, you guys have got it all figured out. I want what this is. This is what I actually want. I want a little condo in Marina Del Rey. He'll always do that in every scene. Like, I like what you've got going on, Lala. That's amazing. DJ James Kennedy, I want what you have. He always does this. It is such a patented Schwartz move is to really butter up whoever he's around by saying that he wants what they have. Um, so Schwartz is like, I want your guys' life. And the camera pans around, just shows like the, the, the mess, like the kids mess bottles in the kitchen. And Schwartz is like, I don't like my life anymore. Schwartz continues in a talking head. I'm not sure a lot of you know things in life, but I am sure I'll be a good dad. Now I hope I'm a DILF, but like, I'm going to be 60 when they graduate high school. I love that the thought of that behind that is the DILF. And then he's like, huh, I'll be 60 when they're in high school. And I will want to potentially do the hippity dippity with the high school friends of theirs, but I'll be 60. Oh man, life is tough. They move outside of the backyard and Sheena's like, I'm going to get into the cold plunge. I'm like, of course you are, Sheena. And Schwartz touches the water. Oh, that feels really good. I want what you have. And Schwartz is like, every time I come to the West side, it's like a gulp of fresh air. It's like, I, it's like what I used to say about sex with Katie. I'm like, you, you, what? You used to say sex with Katie was like a gulp of fresh air. Oh my God. After we boinked, I felt like a breath of fresh air. Oh my God. It just makes me think of that one time where they're in Cabo and he thought romance was just putting a bunch of candy on the bed and he just had a champagne glass laying there seductively with just a bunch of like ding dongs and little Debbies around him. Anyways, Sheena's like, what? And Brock's like, it was like gulp of fresh air. And George is like, yeah, we didn't have a lot of sex towards the end of our marriage, but whenever we did, we'd always be like, well, I don't more often. It feels like, like <laughs> when sometimes I eat scallops and I'm like, why don't I ever eat scallops? <laughs> Brock's like, well, she's doing it more often, just not with you. And she's just like, Brock. And George is like, I know, good for her. So Brock being like a messy little bitch right there and bringing up the Max Boyan situation. And Schwartz, I truly don't think cares. I think Schwartz is probably more bothered that Max Boyan did. It was like, good one, Max. You just checkmated me. <laughs> All fairs in love and war. You've got a huge dong. I've subscribed to your OnlyFans. Anyways, we segue right over to Katie's apartment in Valley Village and Ariana walks in there and she's like, I had six shots of espresso today. I need to keep the buzz going. I'm like, my God, all I can think about is these laxative, laxative pills that Tom Sandoval pushes on everybody. There's espresso going around. I'm just telling you, there's a lot on this tummy. That's a lot of tummy stuff happening. Anyways, there, you know, she's explaining that Anne came over to interview and she's like, I, you know, I said to her maybe in the future, but I feel like right now he potentially could be very petty and very, very vindictive. I'm like, what would give you that thought? And she's like, so I'm getting ready to leave. And Anne's like in the kitchen crying because Tom is coming down on her because he was like upstairs eavesdropping. Can you imagine? I, I wonder, like, I see, this is what sucks. If the producers in any way set this scene up, it's a real shitty that you didn't get us that, that scene, that you didn't let us see that scene with Anne. That's like a huge bummer, you know? about privacy because Tom Sandoval is like, oh my God, you guys, I just realized uh, the Wi-Fi at the Mirage sucks. So there's been a couple of glitches that I'm noticing and I just don't have the time to fix them. So I am so, so damn sorry that there's probably been a little interruption of like, I'll be mid-sentence and it'll be like, uh. And then, you know, so I'm so sorry about that. That is so annoying, you guys. But I'm, I'm working with what I have right now. Oh, my God. 
it's so important me getting this Vanderpump Rules recap out. Ah. <laughs> Anyways, I just think it's ridiculous. The the Anne of it all. You know, if if I anyways, Katie's like, I don't like this invasion of privacy that's been happening all around. I feel like privacy was invaded via Sheena tracking Max like that. We flash back to Sheena's monologue at Sir last week where Sheena's like, I checked to see if my friends got home safe. I saw his location. I was like, oh, oh, maybe he dropped Katie off. I love when Sheena was like, oh, oh. Oh, um, Ariana's like, I mean, I know she has my location, but I'm like, how many people's locations does she have? Turns out the answer is 56 up and Adam today on his show. He knows Sheena as well. And, uh, during it, he gave, uh, Sheena his location. I said, I was like, yeah, give it to her, give it to her. Cause you can just like give somebody your, their location. So I was like, give it to her. And then I wasn't brave enough to text Sheena my location, which would be great if she was like, I see you're in Vegas right now. What's going on? Tell me the news. Anyways, um, does she like, or like, does she just sit back and track everybody? And I was like, you're damn right. She does. Some people talk about Vanderpump rules for a living. Some people track people's locations. It's all good. Anyways, Kate's like, I'm sure my location is literally none of your business. And Ariana's like, I never had Tom's location. Ooh, I mean, you know, uh, maybe in retrospect, right? Anyways, we're back over to Sheena's and George is like, does Katie know that I know? And Sheena's like, I'm staying out of that one. And Brock's like, I've been in the dug house for it. And George is like, oh, you weren't supposed to say anything. And Sheena's like, no, he was not supposed to say anything. That was not his place, especially if that backfires on me. And then Katie gets upset with me. Remember earlier in this season where Katie and Sheena had this kind of truce? I mean, that's got to be just completely over, right? That's like a show truce to begin with. And now that's just over. And Brock's like, well, let's not forget, Sheena. Last summer, she wished for your world to fucking burn. There he is. There's that messy Brock that we know and love, reminding people of people's past transgressions. We flash back to one year ago, Katie on FaceTime with Lala, where she's like, Sheena, you're a shitty person. You're a shitty friend. And it's fine because karma's going to come for you. And I'll watch your word world burn and I'll smile. Katie, Katie's like a poet. She's like Mary Shelley. Schwartz is like, it's fucking hypocritical. That's like one of my closest friends. I kissed Raquel once. She's on the fringe, friend. <laughs> By the way, Schwartz also leaving out, I kissed her to throw off the scent from my boy Sandoval. Sheena's like, well, maybe it's tit for tat. We're back over to Katie's. And Katie's like, I don't even think it was like, oh, this is Tom's friend, Max. I'm going to get revenge. I mean, Katie's pretty much just saying, I wanted to get my freak on. Everyone tried to get inside my mind that night, Katie said. It was sort of coming like, you know, off like Sheena and Schwartz, which this, like this dude has really done bad by me so many fucking times, reminding Ariana and the audience that Schwartz has not been this angel. Schwartz has not always been this guy bringing over plants. You know what I'm saying? Katie in that talking head says, I was truly in a mindset of like, fuck it. Tom can be upset if he wants, but at the end of the day, should I feel bad? No, it's not like we had an agreement, right? Wink. Just at the moment before Katie and Ariana get a text message, both are from Lala in a group text. And the text is Lala going, if you want to chase your water with booze, B-Y-O-B. -B. And Katie's like, are we both getting the same message? And Ari's like, yeah, I'm not looking forward to that water tasting in any way. And uh, so they're talking. Ariana's like, listen, considering it's Lala's thing, it makes sense that she would invite Sandoval because she's really going out of her way to try to like understand something with him. I don't know. Part of her healing journey, I suppose. Yes, the softer side of Lala Kent. Producer's pet. Ooh, Lala is producer's pet. Ariana in a talking head says, short of removing myself entirely from this group of friends, it's not possible just to never be in the same room with my ex ever. So I'm going to go. Lala is my friend and I don't know what the fuck a water tasting is. And I kind of want to find out. Ariana's like, it's not a water tasting. It's a iceberg. Water head. Thank <laughs> Iceberg. We see a plane in the air, and that's right. We're at DJ James Kennedy's Burbank Casa. 
We have to get our outdoor furniture, Allie. And she's like, I know. Well, Lola's water guy's here. His name's Martin. He's the water man. Like, definitely. I've seen this guy on the news talking about water before. And we flash back to Martin, the water sommelier on TV. And it's like, the most important thing is that we'll discover together that water has a taste. Meanwhile, it's 538 on James's stove. Martin is outside setting up in the backyard with Hippie while this guy is just banging around with the water. I'm sorry, for, I had to do the sound effect. I know people get upset. But I'm, I'm, I'm having a tough day. I got to do the Hippie sound effect. Anyways, that would be great if Martin the sommelier, he's biting me. Help, help. This dog is biting me. He won't let go. He's bitten to the bone. He's bitten to the bone. Help, help. Oh, water, help. <laughs> Martin's the dog. He's like he laughs and sprays his water bottle. What if the water saw me? He becomes like a main character next season. Anyways, James is like kind of scared. Like I don't know why they're all hiding from the water guy. And he's like, oh my god, he saw me. I hid. Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. The water man saw me. Lala comes in. It's like, oh my god, it smells so good in here. Like, what does that mean? Like, oh my god, it smells like water. I love water. Anyways, they all meet Martin and James. Is like, since I've stopped drinking alcohol, I haven't quite become the sparkling water connoisseur that Lala has become. Yeah, no, James likes those weed drinks, by the way. Anyways, Lala's like, hi, how are you? And Martin's like, living the dream. I am a water connoisseur. Uh, James continues in a talking head. I'm definitely more of a Red Bull Coca-Cola kind of guy. And Lala's like, I'm very excited about this. And Martin's like, that's great. And Lala's like, I've done wine tasting, but I've been sober for like five years. So water is my thing. That's great. I love it. Schwartz arrives, enters in the backyard. He has a huge redwood tree that he got from the plant store. <laughs> Which is really great. <laughs> but I bought, bought a couple 30 foot pines with me. I was like, Sh Schwartz. And he's like, oh my God, hippy dippy. The dog runs up. Rah, 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 rah. I'm not going to do the sound effect. And uh, by the way, Schwartz in the scene is dressed up like uh, Will Ferrell from Elf. I was like, holy shit, is that Buddy? Is that Buddy the Elf? What is going And by the way, I, Tom Schwartz now has stylists. I know his stylist. Uh, the uh, the Solomon sisters. I love I love these ladies. They were on the show years ago, but they are Schwartz's style team now. And if you've noticed, the last little while, Schwartz has really stepped up his fashion game because he has stylists. Which, by the way, if you get to make a certain amount of money, hell yeah, get a stylist, man. That would like that's the dream is to someday get enough money to have somebody dress my weird shaped body like that would be so awesome anyways james is like you got dressed up and schwartz is like it felt like a good water tasting outfit uh it's a weird it's uh, it's very weird brock and sheena's like hello we're here and schwartz is like did you bring a bottle of Schmirnoff? count how many times this season that sheena has brought in some type of Schmirnoff product like sheena is laughing all the way to the Schmirnoff bank it's truly redonkulous. It is so much Smirnoff. And if you saw in their Marina Del Rey place, they had a shot of like above the kitchen counters and it's just lined with Smirnoff bottles. And I'm like, we get it. Smirnoff is advertising. I don't know if it's on the show or just with Sheena in particular, but it's everywhere. And Sheena's like, the pink lemonade with sparkling water is really good. Katie, Ariana, and Dana Cathan season uh was it season nine cast member dana kathan arrives and uh, they or no see season eight right and brock to katie's like let me give you a hug katie i'll talk to you later i'm sorry i was fucking hammered i was just like oh god i'm sorry i revealed that you fucked max boyens i'm so sorry and katie's like it's all good, Brock. Katie and I talking, it's like, maybe this is payback from Brock, him blabbing about my private life or me talking about his private life. And we do it, folks. We flash back to 2021 when Katie's talking with the artist formerly known as Raquel and Lala. I love that the show still finds way to put Raquel in scenes like, yo, girl, keep talking on your podcast. We're going to keep putting you in scenes. Katie in the scene from 2021 is like, not seeing his kids for like years and years. Okay, but why? Well, he wasn't paying child support. Okay, but why? So, well, he couldn't see his kids. So he just wasn't going to pay child support. Okay, but why? That's got to be a tough. And that's the thing too. It's hard because Brock does a lot of mansplaining. He's like, he's kind of like, um, 
trying to be like Tony Robbins a lot of the time. There's like an inspirational speaker deep within Brock, not even deep within, he wears it on his sleeve. But at the same time, you know, Brock has so many little hiccups in his past that it's hard to come off as the man who can tell you how everything should be and what's really going on when there are so many kind of things that he needs to work on himself. So that's kind of why it kind of fits on Vanderpump Rules perfectly because this show, there are so many hypocritical moments. So that's what's fascinating. And it's not that I don't even, it's not that I disagree with Brock entirely when he says these things. It's just funny because sometimes he doesn't seem to have their own self-awareness for himself or the show does not present him that way. Anyways, uh, Schwartz is like, I feel like lighter on my feet today. I'm not in any trouble. I'm not in the wrong. I haven't done anything. Him going like, I didn't fuck anybody this time. I didn't cheat on anybody. It's a good feeling. Uh, Sandoval is uh, coming in. Sandoval's there and he hears that. He's like, feel good, man. Feel feel good, dude. Sheena's like, okay, what do you want to stand in? He's like, I think on this side for the water right next to me. Yes, yes. And Lana's like, okay, everybody, I've been sober for five years, one day at a time. So I think we'll get there all aboard the water train. We ain't stopping motherfuckers. And little Law's like, give me water, bitch. Anyways, she's like, water's always been there for me. It's the point that if you don't have sparkling water that I want, it's enough to kind of fuck up the entire day. I love that Lala is literally like, um, I'm an, <laughs> Lala literally comes off of like, I'm a complete asshole if I don't get the right water. I was like, that sounds horrible. Like <laughs> you're not drunk, but you will still be an asshole if you don't have the right sparkling water. But okay, what? who am I to judge, right? So Lala loves water. We get into this tasting and Lala's like, has ever, anyone ever done this before? And Ariana's like, no. And Lala's like, okay, I've never done it either. And Santa was like, yesterday. And Lala's like, you did it yesterday? He's like, I'm just kidding. No, regular Dave Chappelle right there, dude. Doing bits, man. Doing bits. He's like, I'm just kidding, dude. No. And Lala's like, okay. I was like, weird. And Ariana takes a deep breath like, oh my God. I can smell his underwear from here. And Martin's like, this planet has had the same amount of water since billions of years. These waters might be dinosaur piss. And she is like, huh? And Katie's like, dumb. And Martin's like, I'm the Harry Potter of waters. And he holds up a clear bottle of clear water. And he's like, this is a still water. There is no carbonation. But when I shake this bottle, it will turn into milk. And Martin shakes the bottle. And of course, it turns white. He's like, this is natural carbonated water. And Martin's like, it's natural carbonated sparkling. And Martin pours some in like a wine glass. Each person holds it so they can taste it. And James is like, oh, holy crap. This is so good. Oh, yes. By the way, I, I was waiting for Sandoval to do a scene joke. Thank God he didn't do it. Um, Martin holds up a fancy champagne looking bottle with a cork. He's like, this is the only cuvee water ever created on this planet. And this bottle is around a thousand dollars. And everyone's like, oh my God, big thousand dollar water bottle. Oh, and Santa was like, what makes it so expensive? And Martin's like, it's the idea of two spring sources collecting like a Bordeaux blend. And Lala's like, how many bottles are in the world of it? He's like, but we just know this is the only one in America. I like that the only bottle in America is given to Scandaval. He waves it around and Santa was like, oh my God, what? And Lala's like, and we're drinking it. Martin's like, cheers. And Lala's like, cheers, you guys. Thanks for coming, everybody. And Katie and the talking head's like, it tastes like water. It just it tastes like water. And Sheena takes a sip. She's like, it's not tap. <laughs> Katie makes a huge shrug and continues in a talking head. Like this doesn't compare to a wine tasting at all. Oriana goes, should we go in the kitchen and get some wine? And Dane is like, yeah, immediately, if not sooner. Martin hugs everyone. Have a good night. Ciao. Great to meet you. Cheers, everybody. Yay, water. Yay. All right. Okay. So the fact that Dana was there is interesting, right? And Dana only says like one or two lines, but she actually filmed a scene with Katie talking about sleeping with Max Boyens. Because if you remember in season eight, that was Dana's storyline was that she, you know, had a thing with Max Boyens, but Max was also boinking other people. So this is from Vanderpod Recaps, who I've mentioned many times on this show, who does like the Lord's work by listening to all of these and taking notes on each one of these podcasts, which I think is just amazing. 
But they go into all of this about Katie going, listen, I did this. And my first thought, you know, even not Schwartz or Max, but it was like, oh my God, Dana. And she kind of goes into the story about all of this. And she was like, that night when I went to Hotel Ziggy, you know, which was in last episode, there was a lot of alcohol, like a lot, and it came to light because Sheena has Max's location. She apparently has 56 people's location. So she was able to see his location at my place and, you know, from there, blah, blah, blah. There's no reason the only person I was going to bring it would be to you because you're, you know, it's kind of like a need to know basis. So yeah, then it kind of blows up and watching it back and hearing it kind of people weighing in on it. Of course, like Tom Schwartz was like, what, Max? I wasn't surprised by his reaction per se. And I also honestly didn't care. I didn't owe him anything. I, he kind of blew our whole agreement of not hooking up with friends or people in this group to bits when he did that whole thing with Rachel last year. I wasn't thinking about anything, unfortunately, which isn't an excuse, but I think to explain my headspace would be like a runaway t- train in like the simplest w- of ways. I think coming from the season previous, which was awful and terrible, and then coming back into the season, which was awful and terrible in different ways, I'd found out that like Tom and Sheena had kept something from me. And even though I didn't care, it didn't feel good. Once again, I'm in a space that it's not safe. People don't give a fuck about me. People don't support me. And I think I just kind of was wasted. And I was just like, I don't give a fuck. It was selfish and reckless. And it was a runaway train. I just didn't think about anything. And then it was the next day. And I was like, oh, oh, that was not a good B. And because obviously the first thing I thought about was you talking to Dana, because I was like, I don't do that. I'm not somebody that like competes with my friends or like tries to get validation out of hooking up with people that my friends hooked up with. I don't know. I don't like to cross contaminate in that sense. I just don't, I don't like to break the girl code like that. So I was just like, fuck, I want to talk to Dana immediately. I don't text. I'm not going to text you. I don't want to even want to pick up the phone and call you. I was like, I want to see you and tell you. And I knew that like, and whatever happens, I have to accept that. If you're like, fuck you, I never want to talk to you again. I have to accept that. And I hate that because I did that to myself, but I have to accept that because of my own actions, you know, but I couldn't undo it, obviously. Then when it comes out of the show and production hears about it, they're like, oh, well, now we're going to take control of this and how you're going to tell Dana. And I had to like hold it. And Dana's like, so, I mean, I guess, and also we need to give more context. blown up right now about it because obviously people who remember me from the show remember I was dating Max back in the day. So we like, do you have an opinion? Of course I have an opinion about it. Obviously I feel like I feel we're going to get into that. So, uh, so she's talking about like, she didn't get fired from Vanderpump rules. She left of her own accord and she was asked back for season nine. She was asked back for season 10 and she was asked back for season 11. And she says, it came down to a lot of things for me in terms of it not being a good fit, but financially it's funny that people think you're on this show and you make all this money, but you get paid very little to nothing. When you first start out, I've told you guys this many times for beginners, they really pay next to nothing. She says, and so it just came down to not making sense for me and many different reasons, but that was a big factor. So it was in season 11 when they came back around and they're like, okay, we can have you film but we're not going to pay you anything and whatever. I was just like, no, I don't. It's just not worth it. And then it was towards the end that was like the last month of filming. They were like, okay, we're going to bring you back into the pocket. Here's some dog food in terms of money, but like, you know, why not? And I kind of was just like, okay, they brought me in. And the first day of filming was that conversation, the conversation with Katie about Max, which we didn't get to see. And it wasn't in the extended version either. She's like, I obviously did not know what the conversation was about. I knew that we were going to to an event later. And then you sat me down and told me and Ariana was there. And then we went like, then we like went to a thing. And then the next day I had a full blown panic attack about the show. I'm sure if you look back at all the things that I've said about it, it can seem wishy-washy. And I understand that, but like, you know, there were positives for me being on the show, but there were also negatives. It was very detrimental to my mental health. And like, I don't like fighting with people. And you've said this before, you don't like it either. But I just, my threshold for that in my normal day-to-day life, I do not have people in my life that I just fight with all the time. It's not a thing. So if it's going to be that way, then those aren't relationships I keep around. So it's hard for me to translate for me for something like, you know, that it's your work. And so I quit. I quit immediately. So you'll probably see me on the next episode in the background and people I'm sure will like, why is she there? Because I was thinking about it, but then I was just like, I hate this. I'm not doing this. I mean, I was shocked when you told me, because when I didn't know what the context of the conversation was. I was just like, I didn't know what I was expecting we'd be talking about, but I certainly didn't think it would be that. I think my main thing about it is I do not want my name mentioned in the same sentence as his name ever again for the rest of my life. And I'm sure that he also feels the same way. So it kind of just felt like I was then again lumped into this narrative that I just had not wanted to be a part of for a really long time. And so it was more about that. We've obviously talked about that, but the thing that bothered me more than anything is that this event happened between the two of you and you didn't know if I was going to be upset about it. And then, like you said, would have 
you would have had to answer to that after, and it could have affected our friendship, but I could not have a lower opinion of Max Boyens if I tried. Well, Dana, have you seen his only fans? No. Um, she's like, my opinion of him is in the gutter. It's at the core of the earth. And to be fair to him, because although I think, although he thinks I'm a fucking psycho, I'm actually very, very level headed. He feels the same way about me. And that's totally fine. There were Tom and Tom had asked me to meet for coffee, like maybe six months before that or something. We hatched it out. We were basically just like, it had been done for a long time. We see things differently. And we all, we were all drinking a lot. And he ended up flipping out on me and screaming at me for an hour, which you and Raleigh sat there and watched things that he was saying about what happened between us. I'm like, your view of reality is so distorted. And he blamed me for a lot of things that he needs to take responsibility for himself in his own life. The things that hurt me the most, by the way, this is, this, I want to see this show. I want to see the Max Boyens Dana show. This is wild. But listen, that's what I thought was interesting that you don't get to see that. That's why Dana was there to have the conversation, but also how dark that Katie had to save that for the show was like, the show was like, like, no, we want you to have that on camera. But then if you did have it on camera, why didn't we see it? And yeah, that's like a dark thing. But Katie takes responsibility. It was like, yo, I was wasted. I was like, you know, but I didn't, I, I, I know you did have something with him in the past and that was weird as well. But this is what I talk about in terms of the 360 viewing of this show. It is just so dark. Anyways, we're back in this and the boys are out there talking. You got Brock, Sandoval, Schwartz, and James. And, you know, Sandoval has his Fruit Loop necklace and his, like, little wife beater top on. He's chugging a sugar-free Red Bull. And Brock's like, what happened to T? What happened to T, dude? And T is the girl, remember, that Billy Lee tried to set him, like, hoard out her friend T. And Santa's like, oh, with T? I don't know, dude. Just chilling, dude. Have you seen anybody else, Tom? And Sandoval's like, I met, I met some people, dude. Yeah. And James is like, pizza's here, pizza's here, it's guy and girl's night, pizza. And Sam's like, wow, dude, you can hear the doorbell from that far? All right. And the girls are congregating, congregating in the living room. And Ariana is saying, saying to the girls, so I talked to Anne, and she abruptly stops talking. And James is like, don't worry about it, I'll grab the pizza. And Sandoval walks in and suddenly is like quiet in the living room. He's like, well, um, just in case, it's like, uh, oh, shit, dude. And then Sheena tries to cover up the awkwardness by saying, there better be ranch. There better be ranch dressing. And James and Sandoval get the pizza boxes. And James like, into the kitchen on the dining table. And Allie's like, James, did you get the ranch? They forgot the ranch, Allie Dally. And Sandoval's like, let me see if I can stop them, dude. And Sheena's like, he's going to be driving away in the van. And Tom like dashes out of like, like a hero. He's like, I must get all the ranch dressing. I am a hero to my friends. Yes, even to my enemies. And he's like, hey, dude, excuse me, sir. And Ariana says quietly, oh my God, since when does he run out? He's doing too much. He's doing way too much right now. He really is trying to put on a little show. And Lala's like making annoyed, fa annoyed faces. And they hear the pizza guy yelling back. He's like, no ranch. I didn't give you any ranch. I didn't bring it. And Ariana's like, why is he doing the most? But this is what happens. This is what happens when you force somebody to be around their ex that just they recently did this. It's not going to be pretty. It's going to be gross. You're, everybody's going to feel awkward. This is what you all wanted. Here it is. Sandoval in a talking head's like, it makes it harder for me to be in the background, dude. Be a wallflower when I hear Ariana making all these comments about me. Well, Sandoval, this is the show, man. This is you want to be in a scene with her. You're in a scene with her. And uh, Sandoval also says, he's like, I've been working hard to rebuild the relationships, but with Ariana constantly putting pressure on people to choose her, the deck is stacked against me. I feel like we're going back to the breath work scene last week. <laughs> the ballad of Tom Sandoval is so sad in my life. I don't wash my undies and I gotta give you a fright. The ballet, the Tom Sandoval, why won't people see? There's only one victim and that person is me. When will Ariana see that this house is mine? Do I need to kill her dog? Or you gonna call me OJ cause I committed a crime? Oh, you got... Anyway, Sandoval gets a plate of pizza 
And uh, he's back out with the boys outside. And Brock's like, are you going to embrace us with some single stories, Sandy? I like Brock's like, let me smell your fingers, Sandoval. Yeah, what have you been doing with these lassies? Ah, oh, it reminds me of when I used to play with mud in New Zealand. And so late, and I would just squish it around. <laughs> Do you have any stories like that, Sandoval? And Sandoval's like, yeah, dude, I got one. The other night, T tells me that Ariana is like asking her questions, like, how old are you? All that kind of stuff. And we get a flashback to that scene last week where Ariana's like, how old are you? 25. He's like, oh, that makes sense. Well, don't waste your time with the 41 year old narcissist. And Sandoval's telling the boys, he's like, she's basically talking shit about me, dude. I'm like on a first date and it's just, I don't know, dude. It felt like really tacky, dude. <laughs> this is great. This man, he's in his 40s wearing a fruit new fruit loop necklace talking about it's tacky. <laughs> I'm dating a 16-year-old and it's really tacky. <laughs> it's really tacky when people point that out. <laughs> he's a cock blocker. <laughs> oh my ex, dude. Classic cock blocker, dude. Like, don't bring Ariana if you don't want somebody to say something. So, you know, it's the bros outside, the girls inside. It's the summer loving thing I always do. Summer loving had me a blast. Summer loving got in Raquel's pants. So uh, Brock is like, uh, all right, all right, listen, Sandoval, I get that. We're still in the infant stage of trying to figure out how we go through this. And I feel like you're living in the prime example of how does this relationship work, especially living together still. Maybe a guy should have a conversation of like, hey, listen. And so I was like, maybe everybody should like chill out, dude. And Brock's like, all right, I was just like helping you out with tea. If you don't want tea to get attacked by Ariana, you need to have a conversation with Ariana, not with us. Dude, I can't, dude. I don't talk to Ariana. And Schwartz and James are just quietly keeping out of it. And James jokes. He's like, oh, go tell her right now. And uh, Brock's like, well, you got to figure out how to have a conversation for the sake of the group. You need to figure out how to talk to each other. Brock, when you every, when everybody says group in this fucking show, just say for the sake of the show. Show. Don't say for the sake of the group. No, you, you guys, for the sake of the show, you need to figure out how to talk to each other. And sounds like, I love how people put that on me, dude. Yeah, man, you're, yeah, you're, you're part of that. Yeah. And Schwartz just stares at Sandoval. He can already just tell. He's like, oh no, dude, darkness. Inside the girls are going low. It's like, Ariana, keep going. I want to hear about Anne. And Ariana's like, yeah, so I don't know what's going on. I asked her if she's okay. She's like, not really. I was sent home. And in the extended version of this, we get a scene. We get a talking head with Anne. And Anne is like, in my panic and sweat, I knocked on Ariana's door and I was like, I think I'm getting fired. <laughs> and Ariana's like, to the girl, she's like, she was so nice. You know, Ariana's like, she was so nice and was like, you're going to be okay. And says, and I was like, thank you. And then I went downstairs to the kitchen to sob. <laughs> Anne's just laughing in the talking head. Like, this is just how Vietnam people talked when they got back. I'm like, I saw people dead everywhere. It was crazy. I love that Anne got talking heads and then they cut her out of the actual show and put her on the extended version on Peacock. But it is wild that, like, the assistant is actually getting talking heads. Like, Anne, you, okay, and I will say this. Anne has a podcast right now. Anne has been an actor for a while. She comes from an improv background. I think she's like super talented. I've, I, I remember seeing her in improv shows back in the day and she is super funny. But at the same time, this is what the Vanderpump economy does to everybody. You can kind of tell that Anne kind of likes this. And I guess why wouldn't you, right? To see yourself on TV, to be talked about, to be interviewed, to be want to be interviewed. There's something, this is what the, the pull of TV is. But it is weird because in the after show, Santa was like, dude, I'm going to sue her, dude. Uh, yeah, uh, she signed an NDA. I want to talk to my lawyer. But at the same time, it, it, like, it, it's just a weird situation all around. Um, so our, uh, Lala's like, okay, um, 
hold on, because this is much bigger than just letting go of an assistant. She's the middleman of you guys. So what is the game plan? And Ariana's like, well, my lawyer could probably do it. And she was like, your lawyer is not going to be telling you when you can go upstairs and use the tonal. And Ariana's like, no, not at all. I mean, it is my tonal. Uh, by the way, Juliana pointed out in the notes that a tonal is an all-in-one smart home gym that uses magnetic weights to offer hundreds of different strength training exercises. Tonals run $3,995 plus tax. Tonal, are you out there listening? I just gave you a plug. I uh, Also, I think Ariana, by the way, did they do a flashback to the gym and it says Ariana's Tonal? I mean, that's so funny. And I, but I bet she got that Tonal for free though, for real. And Lala's like, oh my God, we got to get this figured out. And she's kind of sounding really phony. But I also think there is something funny about all the lawyers that the Vanderpump people have to hire. Like Lala has all her lawyers for Randall. Ariana has lawyers. Tom says he has lawyers. I mean, there's so many lawyers. Like since Scandal broke, like lawyers are just like a part of the Vanderpump universe. And Lala on a talking head's like, I mean, I think your lawyer has better things to do with his time than mediate between you and your boyfriend, but you're choosing to stay in the house. There it is. There's the softer side of Lala, the friend to all. Katie goes outside and goes, I got to get some water. And Schwartz is already at the water table. And he's like, Maloney, what's up, girl? And Katie tells Hippie to stop jumping on her. She's like, chill, Hippie. Hippie, no, chill. Hippie, you've got to chill. Please, Hippie, please. No, do not. <laughs> but anyway, Hippie is just jumping all over Katie. And she's like, oh, Graham, sorry, Hippie, what's your name? Oh, God. And Schwartz is like, he's like a dog in heat kind of like Max Boyens. And Katie's like, which one was my glass that I was in? I don't know. What am I doing out here? And Schwartz is like, what's going on? Anything you want to talk about? And Katie smiles at him. And he goes, is there anything you want to talk about? And Schwartz laughs and goes, you dirty dog. Let me smell your fingers, Katie. And Katie laughs. She's like, I was just trying to like, I'm trying on the Schwartz, you know, like pants and walking a mile in them. And Schwartz is like, well, don't put this on me. And Katie laughs and is like, what? What do you want to know? What do you want to know? And Schwartz is like, Max, come on. I, I would love if Schwartz is like, how big is he? Is it girthy? What, is, oh, cut? Uncut? What are we talking? What? Are, <laughs> but it is so weird. But this is like a kind of a meet cute scene. This is like the scene in a rom-com where like, oh, my God, are they going to get back together? Oh, my God. And Katie covers her eyes and goes, Tom. And Schwartz is like, by the way, I'm not mad. I like it. It's like, by the way, I think it's kind of hot. Katie's like, I don't know. When I tried to unpack it, I'm like, I might have been in an extreme fucking mental mentality because I was like, Tom has been doing me dirty for years and years and years. I'm going to give it a thought. I'm just going to do what I want. And Schwartz is like, Max is literally my best friend as well as Tom Sandoval and Jax and DJ James Kennedy and Ken and Lisa. No, she's like, and you fucked him and you roasted me into oblivion because I kissed Raquel and she was barely in the friend group. I mean, she was a little, she was a little bit more than barely in the friend group. Katie's like, cause prior to that, I asked for one thing and George is like, I know I wanted to be friends Schwartz and you couldn't even respect one wish, one simple wish. And George is like, I know. Well, that's such a flimsy agreement. I'm sorry that I hurt your feelings. Would you like a plant? Truly, I did. I, I really did do that. And Katie's like, but that's the whole reason why we got divorced because everything I felt was flimsy to you. Everything I felt was so unimportant to you. And Schwartz is like, no, that's not true. And Katie's like, my feelings never mattered to you. And Schwartz is like, let's not do that. Schwartz in a talking head's like, it's messed up. He's like one of my closest friends. We had an agreement that I, you know, betrayed. But Katie's had this air of moral superiority and uh, she fucked up a little bit. When Schwartz puts things out there, it's just like bird feed for like people on Facebook to be like, Katie has always done moral superiority. You know, that's what you just see. She's like, what did Schwartz say in this episode that I can type in my Facebook comment? Sorry, you guys. It's just so upsetting to read some of that shit. It's like, like Schwartz, I feel like these guys know it too. If they just put it out there, it'll get picked up. You know, it just be like somebody else's thought. Um, but I also like Schwartz keeps going. He's like one of my closest friends. Well, that seems like a conversation you should have with one of your closest friends, not your ex-wife. Like, honestly. And by the way, if we're bringing Dana in, like, did somebody try to get Max in to have that conversation? It seems like a conversation worth having. 
Um, but like, yeah, I'm sorry. Like uh, you can say Katie has moral superiority, whatever it, it's fine, but like go play back their entire relationship. Like, honestly, he was a good, good guy, a fun guy, but he for did not do anything that Katie needed for their relationship. Schwartz in a talking head goes, Katie's a fuck up too. And, uh, it feels good to say that. <laughs> so I love, I love that he, I love that now he feels moral superiority. And Katie goes, I've been pretty fucking affable of you and accepting of you and letting a lot of shit go with you all over the years. And he's like, can we hear? And he holds out a hand to like shake. He's like, what is this? And he's like, can we shake? And Katie's like, I know, but like, can we just start fresh and not continually delve into each other's past? I love that he's like, can we please, because there's 30 other things that I did that I'm scared that are going to be found out. So can we do a truce right now? And Katie's like, I'm not delving into the past. And Schwartz is like, this happens so frequently with us. And Katie's like, I'm not delving into the past. He's like, okay, okay. Can we be cool? Can we be friends again? I'm not saying we have to be BFFs. And Katie's like, but literally I'm not, let's go to dinner. I don't want to go to dinner. Not like on a date. Just like hang out sometimes like you and Max. Um, and Katie's like, you know what? But I don't want to. And she's like, okay, that's fine. That's fine. And Katie's like, until you want to make better choices of like clothing and things like that. And Schwartz is like, it's a cool shirt. And she's like, what? Well, well what is this? And he points at her lace bra and panty print t-shirt and sleeveless jean jacket. I do love, I love that Katie is uh, dressed like Billy Idol, uh, Billy Idol from the 80s. Um, Katie's like, this is cool as fuck, dude. And Schwartz is like, no, it's not serving. I'm just just kidding. It's a cool outfit. Max, really? What was he like? Did he use tongue everywhere? Tell me now. So we go back into the house. The girls are sitting around and Brock has migrated into the girls' conversation because, you know, he's going to explain some stuff. And Brock's like, time out. All just happens to be walking from the living room, just eavesdropping again. And Ariana's like, okay. So I asked her advice on assistance and she was saying, I would also really love to work for you. Well, um, and then the attempted dog murderer was eavesdropping and Sandoval stops dead in the kitchen and glares at, I, at Ariana in the white aloe hat. He's like, this aggression will not stand, dude. No, dude, not with this Fruit Loop necklace on. You just called me a dog murderer, dude. No way, not on my watch. And Ariana's like, and then I left to go to Katie's. And she was crying. That's all I know. And Brock's like, what was the attempted dog murder? And Santa was like, oh, she's referring to me. What was that reference for, huh? And Santa was like, she left food out in the room, dude. She left food out in the room. That's what happened. And Ariana is like, um, no, dude, you went into my room with the door closed. Do not ever fucking do that again. In a talking head, he's like, he not only let Maya in my room, but then he locked her in there for hours. So while she was trapped in there, she chewed on takeout containers that had like wooden skewers of chicken to and like that carelessness, given now what she's ingested could literally end her life. And Ariana's like, if you had to go into my room and say, I'm like, you haven't emptied the litter box for your cat in two years. And Ariana's like, I literally emptied the litter box when you were out of town, maybe like a fucking week ago and cameras show Ariana kneeling on the floor, cleaning out the litter box one week earlier. Great filming. And Santa was like, no, dude, that's a lie, dude. That is a lie, Ariana. You didn't do it last week. So this was a little bit in the extended version. Ariana was like, oh, dude, really? Do you want me to take pictures? pictures of me cleaning out the litter box next time you want to come back at me about the litter box right when you almost killed my fucking dog wrecked it and ariana he's like ariana is taking a very quick jump from accident to dog murderer dude and he's like maya's okay there's no dead dog in the situation dude it's fucking ridiculous he says in the talking out and uh and then sam's like um and second of all why don't you respond to an email dude why don't you respond to an email? And Ariana just gets furious. She's like, my lawyer will respond to an email when it's fucking time. It is so intense, guys. But outside, Schwartz 
you know, can hear Ariana raising her voice. You can tell his butt's puckering up and Katie is in the midst of talking. She's like, finding out you made out with Sheena is like, what, you know, what was that, Tom? And back inside, Ariana's like, when I come home and from, and Sam's like, put on your big girl panties and respond to an email. And Ariana yells, my lawyer will be dealing with you, not me. Well, tell your lawyer, dude, to be a professional. And Ariana's like, my lawyer very professional. Sam's like, he can't respond to an email in two months. And Ariana's like, my lawyer is sending you an email with a very well thought out response. Okay. Well, for two months, it better be. And Ariana's like, you're fucking, why are you talking to me? You fucking left the back door open when I came home from fucking sir the other night. It was wide fucking open. One more fucking example of your carelessness and your fucking callousness when it comes to that house. And Sam's like, callousness? What does that even mean, dude? And I was like, that was my fucking dream house and my fucking children. And Santa's like, your children, dude? Your children. And she's like, get the fuck away from me. 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 And Santa Ball turns to go out back. He's like, okay, dude. Okay, dude. And Ariana's like, never look at me in the fucking eye again, you fucking piece of shit. And Santa Ball spins around his white aloe hat. It's like blowing in the wind. And he's like, don't look at me in the eye. You already have got everything. You got everything. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be on Broadway, dude. You got everything, dude. He'll never get it. And Ariana's like, get away from me. And Santa's like, you got all the campaigns. You're going to take my assistant. I love Bic, dude. I love Bic. By the way, this is a perfect chance for Ariana. It would be great because she got like a little heat for not cleaning the cat litter box. This is, I hope some cat litter box company like signs Ariana up and like, <laughs> when you're scared of your roommate and you do not have time to clean the cat litter box because you don't want to be in the same living space as him. Like I would love that commercial for Ariana, but I love that this is the fight. So for Ariana, it's betrayal. For Tom, it's like, you got everything, dude. You got campaigns right and left. And Ariana's like, I'm going to call 911, ruin my life, my house, and then fucking attempt to kill my fucking dog by letting her in my room and shutting her in there for fucking hours. But once again, this is why she didn't want to film with him. She's angry. I mean, this to me shows that she is fucking human. She is not some ice queen like people paint her out to be, but she can't be perfect. There is no perfect victim. So either she's too quiet and she's ignorant to the whole stuff, or she is too mad and too angry. But here it is. This is it. Everybody's seeing it. This is the big scene. Um, and Sandoval goes out back and picks up his man bags. He's like, I'm going, dude. I'm taking my man bag and I'm getting out of here. And James is like, sorry, dude. Sorry you had to get like that. And Santa was like, her dream home for her kids? Okay, dude. And that's so fucking stupid because on the after show last week, DJ James Kennedy was laughing at Sandoval. He's like, he told me he wanted to have his kids running around in the backyard. He could picture his kids there where he banged Raquel. <laughs> I can't believe he's talking about raising his kid there with the jacuzzi that he was in with Raquel. I can't believe that. Oh. Anyways. Santa was like, peace out. And James was like, all right, see you later. Bye. Schwartz and Katie are standing there watching the fallout. And Schwartz is like, um, I just lost my train of thought, dude. Uh, inside of the kitchen, it's very quiet. Camera zooms in on Lala, the softer side of Lala. And you see how she's looking at Ariana. Like she totally disapproves. No one has seen anything. And Schwartz is like, um, but from here on out, I want to. And Katie's like, I won't fuck any more of your friends. And Schwartz sputters a laugh. He's like, oh, okay, let's go. Let's go. Unless you could, could I watch? Is that? No. Okay. Okay. Anyways, Ariana is like, the shit that she ate was fucking wooden chicken satay sticks. We're sitting there on my nightstand stacked like that. So I spent $6,000 to have that shit extrapolated from her fucking stomach. Now, I don't think extrapolated is the word there, but she's obviously angry. Lala on a talking head goes, should he have gone in the room? No, he shouldn't have. But the dog eating all of this disgusting skewer meat on the side of your bed? Ariana's fault. Throw your trash away. Didn't you do a trash bag commercial? Didn't you know how to trash? Shouldn't you know how to throw trash in the trash? Great, Lala. Great. Should we make fun of some tummy tea that you represent? I mean, so Sandoval in this scene makes fun of or says, you got all the you got all the sponsorships, dude. And now Lala says it in her talking head. I mean, Lala, you do understand how it comes off. Even if you say in your podcast, it comes off like you are bitter and jealous about this to even bring it up in a talking head. But also, let me throw out another thing. 
Have you ever lived with a roommate or a loved one where you do not want to be around them? You do not want to be around them. So you've taken to doing everything in your little space with a door that you can shut. And so you eat there because you don't want to be in the kitchen around that other person. And yeah, like maybe you should have thrown shit out or maybe she just thought that the dog was going to be taken care of. Maybe she didn't know about the AC thing. But once again, it's that lack, that carelessness that Tom has because he's so concerned with himself. He's not concerned with anybody else but himself. So he's not thinking about the dog. He's not thinking about closing doors and all of this. He's kind of up in his own head. And that's what we're dealing with here. It's just this carelessness again and again and again. But sure, go off, Lala. Blame Ariana. Go off. I just think there's a world in which she probably does everything in that room, or at least tries to, because it is an uncomfortable situation. And yes, Ariana should move out, Lala. Oh my God. Dude, there, I just, it's, I'm just, anyway, Schwartz is out in the yard. He's already on the phone to Sandoval. He's like, dude, that was really heated. And sounds like she called me a dog murderer, dude. And George is like, what the fuck? Why? He's like, because the air conditioner is messed up. I had to get in the room and do some shit. Either me or Anne. One of us didn't. I love that he <laughs> throws Anne under the bus. He's like, it could, it's probably Anne, dude. She's stupid. She's stupid as hell, dude. Well, one of us didn't close the door all the way. Ariana had food on the table and Maya got into it. And George is like, that's stuff happens with dogs, dude. And we get a flashback to last week's episode where Schwartz is like, did he ever tell you the story where she ate like 500 laxative pills? Or was it 50? And Santa was like, it was 500, dude. And Schwartz is like, Jesus, that was like literally a low key trial run to see if you guys could coexist. I mean, who knows in due time? Schwartz, I love Schwartz is like, maybe we could really make it work though. <laughs> Santa was like, but dude, did you see that rage that fucking comes out of her, dude? This is what I don't miss from my entire relationship. It's fucking scary fucking rage all the fucking time, dude. And George is like, no comment. I don't want to, I'm, I'm just going to go in there and probably just excuse myself. And Santa was like, all right, dude, bye. So this is great. Let's talk about rage, right? Let's say, uh, oh, you see how scary she is? This is what I dealt with. Poor, poor little old me had to deal with a big, bad old woman that uh, was just horrible to me. It was just so hard on my spirit. And you can see, you can see that's how she was all the time, dude. That's how she was all the time. Now, this is great. This is uh, this is from one of my favorite Twitter accounts, Satchel, Satchel Maloney. But she, uh, she retweeted, this is from an account. Sorry, this is from a, an account called uh, SS that I think she got this clip from uh, that edited this together. So I'm going to play um, Ariana's rage clips throughout all the seasons. Okay. So just, this is extreme rage. So just, just get ready for extreme rage. Uh, here we go. Okay, so uh, that, I sorry that wasn't Ariana. That was Tom. <laughs> that was Tom. That was the rage. Oh, but yes, Ariana. The, and by the way, when I was looking at that clip up close, of course, dude. As so it was Satchel Maloney retweeted this, but it is my. Of course, it is. When I saw the little inscription on the, uh, it is my favorite account. My new favorite account. I don't say this right 
remember. Coca, 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 C-O-C-C-A, C-O-C-C-A. Her name's Christina. And I talked about her on Monday's episode, but this person is a genius. She edited all that stuff together. I talked about her clip of Sheena with John Mayer. Someday I just want to do an episode just on that interview. But this person, I'm telling you, this Christina is just a, it, her, it's at Coca Coca, C O C C A, C O C C A. I didn't realize that was her, but of course it was her. She is a damn genius. Her mind just collects all of these scenes and she is so on the money. I mean, this, I mean, I, I just discovered her a couple of weeks ago and I'm just blown away. I mean, th- th- to me, this is the future of Vanderpump Rules here. This, I mean, like I, uh, I'm just so, I hate to keep giving her these, I hate to get, no, I love to give her these plugs, but I hate to keep like, catching her ass, but I'm just blown away. Like I just, this is like a beautiful mind for Vanderpump Rules. Her mind is clay. And she, I mean, these edits are just amazing. They're just amazing. Well, anyways, of course that's her. Good damn. Great job, man. But yeah, that was just a bunch of clips of Vander of, of Tom Sandoval yelling. Anyways, Sam's like, peace out, dude. I'll see you later, dude. I'm going to go hang out with T and do some young people stuff, man. That's what I'm going to do. Inside, Ariana's like, this is why I don't talk to him. Literally take zero responsibility for locking Maya in my fucking room as if it's none of my own business to have something on my nightstand and then shut the door and make sure she's not in there, which I responsibly do every fucking time. And Lala's like, you're going to have to have a product productive conversation with him. I know you don't want to. And Ariana's like, I cannot do that. And Lala's like, it's for the well-being of your animals. And Ariana's like, I am not capable of having a productive conversation with a fucking sociopath, disgusting, psycho, narcissist, gaslighter, piece of shit person. Boom. And she was like, well, like now, and she was like, oh my God, I'm tracking them on my phone right now. She was like, well, like now you're going to go home tonight. And just like the two of you are going to be in the house. And Ariana's like, set fire to his fucking ass. And Katie's like, that's my line. Sheena and I talking to her goes, seeing Ariana upset like this just breaks my heart. Ultimately, what's best for your mental health is to find a way to process these emotions and then move on with your life. I mean, Sheena is right, but I find it just so weird that all of this cast now knows the right way to go about these things when they, we've seen them go about these things the wrong way all the time in their own lives, in their own scenes. But yes, everybody knows the right way to go about this. Anyways, it's suddenly quiet in the kitchen and Schwartz is like, how's the pizza? And Dana rolls her eyes and Lala's like, oh my God. And Ariana and Schwartz is like, and now I'm mad at you again by association. And Schwartz is like, I knew it. And Ariana's like, get out of here. And Schwartz is like, bye guys. Dana, good to see you. You slept with Max as well. So has Katie. Anyways, call me Katie. And Lala's like, bye Schwartzy. And Schwartz is like, bye law. <laughs> what a bunch of just hooligans. What a bunch of misfits. What a dark... It's just darkness, man. Darkness. Okay, so this is a whole scene that got cut out of this week's show, but is on the extended version on Peacock. And this scene is fucking gnarly. So it's three guys, Kyle Chan, Tom Schwartz, and Tom Sandoval. And Sandoval is wearing this like blue flowery cardigan with like the sleeves cut out. I think my crush wore the same cardigan in the sixth grade and he has the fruit. He has the fruit loop necklace on. And it's just, it's bro, it's just guys being guys and Kyle Chan. And Sandoval's like, Katie still uh, no, Schwartz is like, Katie still has my location um on her phone. How do I turn that off? I don't know how to do that. And Santa was like, oh, dude, I know how to do it, dude. I'll show you how to do that. He's like, I mean, I don't care. It's not like Katie gives a shit. And Child Chan's like, he talks like he's the expert. Uh, he talks like he's the expert with the phone. Ha, 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 ha. Which Kyle Chan was like, that's pretty funny, actually. Because it's like, Sandoval, you're horrible with your phone. You drop it out of your pocket, all of this shit. Anyways, they walk into this place. I just like, these are like the three stooges right here. And they get in there and it's like, you know, he's like, we're, Sam was like, we're just going to just chill and eat, dude. Not a biggie, man. And the chef introduces him to these guys. And he's like, oh, Chef Marco, it's all right, dude. Uh, yeah, we would love to try some of your pot, your main lobster paella, dude. Um, I've taken a lot of laxative pills, so that is going to be amazing when I crop that out. Yeah, dude. So the boys are talking, just boys being boys. And uh, Sam was like, I ran into the girl, Brooke, dude, at, you know, yeah, I ran into Brooke. Yeah, used to work at Thur. Her friend put on the singles event, you know, and she's having one this Saturday at Sky Bar, dude. You know, right in our range, maybe even a little younger. And, he, and Schwartz's like, dude, we should go, dude. 
And he's like, I'm fragile. I'm fragile lately. I just found out my best friend's banging my ex-wife. Uh, and Kyle's like, Schwartz and I have never been, oh no, Sandoval's like, Schwartz and I have never been single at the same time. So I think singles night is a good opportunity for us to get out there and meet some people and get our mojo back a little bit, dude. I regret the day these guys ever learned the word mojo. It's like when the Kardashians learned the word vibes. It just never have been the same. And by the way, it's like we've never been single at the same same time. No, you've still like fucked other girls. You were just like with people at the time. But yeah, I guess technically you're single. I don't know. Anyway, Sandoval in a talking head. Sandoval looks bleary eyed in his talking head. He's like, um, you know, Katie and Ariana have have clearly moved on, dude. So it's time for us to F2 as well, dude. And Schwartz is like, fuck it, dude. I'll say yes and see what happens. Yeah, I'll do it, dude. They also order oysters and all like these kind of fruity drinks. It actually looks pretty good. And he's like, oh, I had a good conversation with Katie. And Sam was like, what's that hypocrite up to? She's like, I just acknowledge the hypoc hypocrisy. He's like, Sam was always like, fucking big time you did, dude. Yeah, you better have. And uh, Sam was like, Katie has made her entire adult life all about slut shaming women, dude. And we flash back to Katie from 2013, saying that whore over there, or Lala in 2016. Of uh, I call it how I see it. Um, and you know these flashbacks of Katie saying things that she felt in 2022 about Raquel and her friends, and Katie going, "She's a fucking whore." And George is like, "I really want her to be happy, pre-divorce, post-divorce. I want her vagina to be happy." And Sam was like. The fucking hy hypocrisy is just insane, though, dude. It's always about Katie's feelings, you know, and nobody else's. I love that, you know, I love that Sandoval and Katie had this, you know, tete a tete where Sandoval fake apologized to Katie. And you just see how internally angry he is at this woman and will forever be internally angry at Katie. Anyways, the oysters come out. And then, of course, uh, you have to make some uh, jokes about the, the girth of the oysters. And Schwartz is like, this oyster needs a magnum. It's a meaty oyster. The first time these guys have talked about using a condom in forever. Anyways, they joke about Katie feeling the same way about Max. They cheers to oysters. And uh, Santa was like, you got to swallow your pride sometimes, dude. I think I'm getting better at these days. You know, I'm a work in progress, but I think I'm getting better. And they said they did a water tasting with James to Kyle. And Kyle's like, oh, that's very awkward. Basically, Kyle, she called me a dog murderer because I left the door open when she had the food in there. Like she had food in her bedroom, dude. And he was like, bedroom, yeah. So yesterday I fixed the air conditioning because if I don't do it, it'll never happen. I go in there and she started screaming that my room, my house, you know, she was irate, dude. The level of rage. Holy shit, Schwartz says. Ariana doesn't do a goddamn fucking thing in that house, dude. I don't even know how her ass gets wiped. The girl's so fucking goddamn lazy. You didn't even empty the litter box of your cat, dude. And then we had two days earlier, Sandoval emptying it going, Jesus. Come on, man, dude. It had fucking 12 shit in it. It gets fucking annoying to have her like talk shit about me, dude. Like being a certain way when she literally is the laziest fucking person, dude. Schwartz is just not saying anything. I think the only thing that somehow keeping it alive is you guys living under the same roof. Yeah, dude, it, it's disrespectful in a way. It's like the only thing, Sandoval, Ariana's really busy. So, uh, Ariana's really busy. She has like so many things in the, you know, I think, you know, she's flying to meet the Pope one day. So I'm sure it's a lot for her to like handle, like house hunting. Huh. But I have it on record that she doesn't want the house. So she's literally only fighting me out of spite. Can you imagine that? And then he's like, um, I got the invite for Sheena for beach day, dude. Ariana will be there. And uh, um, everybody's invited. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go up to Ariana and pretend like nothing happened. And just be like, hey, what's up? And George is like, no. And Sandoval laughs. He's like, ha, 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 ha. He, he laughs like an evil guy, like the evil bully in an 80s comedy film. Like that's, he's like, ha, 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 ha. I mean, but like, listen. The cat litter box. Yeah. I don't know. I've never had a cat. It, it looked like a lot of poop. But how do we know Sandoval's not shitting in that box? Honestly, how do we know Billy Lee's not shitting in that box? How do we know any of those hooligans aren't shitting in that box? But the main concern of that whole scene was just the anger he had 
of like, oh, she wouldn't even wipe her ass, dude. She's so fucking goddamn lazy. The way he said that shit, it was like, it was, it was, it was, it was anger. It was real weird anger. It wasn't even funny, like make fun of Sandoval kind of being goofy. Like it was, it was nasty. And I wish they had left that in the main show because I don't think enough people got to see how big of an asshole he can be. Anyways, we go to a next scene and it's, it's cheery. It's like, I got to sit, sit. I got money on my wrist, money on my wrist, money on my wrist. And we start out at Kate Katie's and she sends a text message to Ariana. Are we going to Sheena's beach there? We should just fake our own deaths. When you're going to lay down, when you're going to sit down, sit down over at Ariana and Sandoval's house, Sandoval's putting the trash cans out on the street with all that cat shit in it. You know, those just, <laughs> just trash cans just filled with shit. You know, the one thing I know about the Valley, these guys love their trash cans. Jax Taylor loves to take out his trash cans. Ariana responds to Katie with the text. I'm not missing out because of his dumb at let's go. His dumb, by the way, I find that hysterical. Like we literally just found out that Sandoval sometimes wears the same underwear for five days in a, a row, but yeah, let's talk about the cat litter box. But that's what I'm telling you. All in all, that house smells. It just has to. Lala's working out in her apartment, taking a movable weight. Yeah, Lala, you get at storyline uh at sheena and brock's marina del rey brock's like summer moon look at all your fruit we still have guess what mommy and daddy are doing and sheena looks up and winks going to work and sheena's like honey and brock ignores sheena we're gonna have fun and sheena gives a what are you doing look and brock's like together you want us to have a good time don't you summer and summer's like uh-huh have Tom Sandoval unblock me. And Brock's like, yeah, because we love you too. We want you to have fun with all your new friends. Are you going to open them all up? And she was like, I'm really bummed that Gabby isn't more available. And that's the, the daycare lady. And Brock's like, it's difficult, but once we find somebody that we like, it'll be worth it, you know? And she was like, yeah, I just hate going back to the drawing board. And Brock's like, well, how many times have we actually gone to the drawing board? So now we're at the drawing board and we're actually going to have to do something. Brock and her talking heads like, before the pandemic, me and my colleagues owned a couple of fitness studios and then we sold them. And then Sheena became the main breadwinner. <laughs> <laughs> so that put me at home more. And I think getting a nanny is going to help me figure out the next steps for me and my career. It's the only thing holding me back. I'm a Carl Radke. And Sheena's like, honey, did you invite Tom already to beat say? Maybe we talked about it. And Sheena's like, I need to uninvite him. Why? Why are you uninviting him? And Sheena's like, after last night, and we flash back to the night before, Varian's like, you want to come back at me and litter mocked? You almost killed my fucking dog. Do not go in my room. That is the only safe space I have in that home because you fucking wrecked it. And Brock's like, everyone is invited. I love their secret. No, that's when we got to put the heat on even more. We've got to really make this explosion this episode. And if she can't handle that, then she shouldn't be going to places. Brock, be careful, man. You're like a couple seasons in. She shouldn't be... So then if she doesn't want to step it up to the plate and figure it out, that's on her. To be that triggered by somebody, you want to try and control your emotions. And if that's a trigger, figure out how to fix it. Because what I saw was not okay. Oh my God, you guys, it's not okay to Brock. It's not okay to Brock. What are we going to do? Oh no, it's not ever. Oh, Brock, we get it. I think you're trying to help the show, but it's weird. And you got to be careful, man, because I think you have too many things in your own past that will get brought up. That'll be like, why are you even speaking on this? You know, I don't know. And I like Brock, but like, it's like, he's a lot this episode and he has really just way too strong of opinions on something that I don't think he should, you know? And it, Sheen is like, I'm curious if, I mean, I'm assuming they had no interaction when she got home last night, but I'm curious if based on that blow up, if they did. And, um, Brock is like, but who's the one yelling last night? And Sheena's like, Ariana. And Brock's like, exactly. And Sheena's like, because of him, because he walked past her. Here's the thing. It's like, it's like childish stuff, Sheena. These guys are adults. Brock, these guys are adults. They're not fucking adults. You think Sandoval's an adult with what he did? Are you fucking kidding me? None of us are adults. And uh, Sheena's like, do you want me to explain it to you? Or do you want... Or do you want to cut me off? And Brock grits his teeth. Okay, explain it to me. And Sheena's like, do you understand how sometimes you just get real heated real quick? Yes. So then who the fuck are you to judge Ariana for getting heated real quick when someone she hates who did something very irresponsible that had her dog end up in the hospital? See, Sheena fully gets it sometimes. She does get it. 
But also, Summer Moon is right there. Summer Moon's just drawing away. Uh, Brock said, just like for her not to accept his apology. It's not condoning his actions. It's not doing that. She should do it for her own sanity, for her own sake. She's not giving him a pardon. I love that she, Brock thinks it's like soccer of like, good game, good game. Hit the showers. All right. And Sheena's like, she's not there yet. Sheena and I talking heads like, what Sandoval did, it's the best thing that ever happened to Ariana. It has brought so much prosperity and wealth. <laughs> Sheena finding a new way to say brand deals. It has brought so much prosperity and wealth and happiness and opportunity into her life. But I'm afraid if I say anything to Ariana about wanting to move past this anger and hatred against Sandoval, like she's going to cut me out. Um, You know, it. what Sandoval did, uh, d you know, didn't give... This is great. What Sandoval did didn't didn't give Ariana all that. It's the fallout of what he did gave her the opportunity. Um, so it's not Sandoval giving this blessing. It's Sandoval's dumb ass gave her that kind of project project. You know, was able to <laughs> extrapolate. No, was able to like launch her. But it wasn't like Sandoval blessing her with this this gift that he gave her. No, it wasn't a gift. He, if he knew what was going to happen, he definitely wouldn't have cheated because he just didn't want to see Ariana succeed that much. Um. Anyways, Brock's like, now she's letting it become more. She's taking all that anger, and Summer Moon's like, take it all out. And Brock's like, get it out. So, but like Brock, man. Uh, Anyways, we're over at Ariana. She's opening delivery boxes and Maya begins to bark for someone at the door and it's Lucinda, the interior designer. And, you know, they're they're coming in, they're going over each room and Ariana's like, I just want to go through old bank stuff, making a list. There was some stuff there. I want to find out what I paid for. And Lucinda's like, I know when I was doing the receipts, I was like, this isn't so even. Oriana in a talking head goes, suffering through the water tasting has made it even more clear that I have to get out of this house as soon as possible. And Lucinda's like, What's the plan? We're going to bring this home to, to, together. It should not be staying here. Lucinda helped design and pick out the furniture for the house, so she has a complete inventory list of who paid for what from when and where, where and when. So my counteroffer has no loopholes that he can fuck me over. And Ariana's like taking a list and walking with Lucinda around. Okay, I got the sofa, I got the side table, the chairs, the mirror. And Lucinda's like, oh, I know almost everything is yours. Um, and we get a flashback to 2021 and just showing all of these, you know, things that they've bought, you know, through the years. Um, Ariana's like, these coffee tables, I remember him not liking them. I almost feel like these were me as well. And Lucinda's like, now what about like these little tchotchkes and all that stuff? And Lucinda's like, oh, I see the sword got returned. And that's the sword that uh, Sandoval gave Jax, the samurai sword side by Randy Jackson based off the Step Brothers movie. That was a really funny scene. And then remember Jax returned it in the middle of the night and it got caught on the ring camera because Jax was a big baby and didn't want to have something that Sandoval gave him. And Ariana's like, yep. And the penis flute that he made and glue back together, we flash back to Logan snapping it over the knee during the Scandal episode. And Tom cried about that, which was amazing. And Lucinda's is like, what about these little things? And I was like, little things, I can care less. In a talking head, she's like, I'm pretty sure when Tom sent me a letter of intent to buy me out of the house, he thought I would say, great, thanks for the cash and leave all the furniture that I paid for and picked out just sitting there for him to use. I don't fucking think so. Ariana's like, okay, so now that we've gone over it, I'm going to attach it to an email to my attorney and then have him send it out to Tom. And then, and Lucinda's like, wait for him to explode. It's like, maybe, maybe not. I don't have a lot of faith in that. And Lucinda's like, I don't know if he has the capacity um, to, to not do that. And then we flash to that sad Lego painting of Tom and Ariana on the wall made out of Legos, which I was like, I don't even know even my reality show museum that I would want that. I don't even think I would want the Lego thing. Like I really wanted the Bubba painting. And I still, to this day, if anybody can get me that Sheena, Sheena and Shay wedding print. Oh, I was so close to getting that one time. It's like, that is my Ark of the Covenant. That is my Indiana Jones. Like that, that's everything to me. Anyways, the song plays, please don't come and kill my vibe. If you're not good for a good time, please get out. Oh uh, yeah. And we get to the beach and James Brock are hauling stuff to set up. And, sh and this is what Brock should be used for is hauling stuff. 
You got something to haul? Let's get Brooke. Let's get Brock in there. It's like perfect. And James is like, oh, you fucker. You dunked me on the side of my fucking ta- temple with that. Watch it. And she just like, Brock. James in a talking head is like, beach day in LA. It's not guys night. It's beach day. It's a lot of work. I mean, you've got to pack up the picnic bag, the ice box. And James, he's like, you've got to get through the traffic. You've got to go down the PCH. That's when the journey really starts. Then you got to look for the parking. You got to get the place. You know, that's why I have a pool in the back now. Go, come on. Anyways, Brock is like, watch this. And he just, in his all his manliness, he just pushes the canopy open. It really is actually quite impressive. Ariana walks in the sand. She's like, there is nothing sexy or grateful about this. And Katie's like, nope. He's like, hey, guys, welcome from the Sahara to the beach. And Schwartz arrives. Beach day redemption, baby. What's up? And she's like, ready to get a drink thrown in your face? Here's Smirnoff. We flash back to last year's beach day where Santa's like, this is a big deal. And James is like, yeah, it's tight. And Schwartz is like, bigger than Richella. And <laughs> James throws a drink. Remember James throwing a drink in Schwartz's face? He's like, fucking hilarious. You're a fucking joke, man. Schwartz is like, no, those days are over. This is a beach day redemption. And so Lala's coming and Ariana's like, well, I'm pretty sure Tom's coming. When I was getting ready to leave, he had his little stripy crotchet crochet thing in the dryers and Schwartz laughs. And Brock's like, stripy crochet equals beach day for Tom Sandoval. And Ariana's like, definitely. He's planning on going to the beach. Yeah. And Brock's like, Ariana, you were a bang on the money when you saw you saw that stripy thing in the dryer. And Ariana, Sandoval's approaching now. And Ariana's like, oh yeah, there's stripes coming right now. And you can see his crochet thing is coming uh, in the sand. This is like Jaws all over again. Sandoval walks up in that fuzzy green and white crochet thing. He's like, what's up, bro? And Schwartz is like, what's going on? Chilling, dude. Chilling. Did you get a little trim? Yeah. Back there, dude. Sandoval turns his head around. Yeah, dude. Nice necklace, James. And James answers, what's up? Hey, so today for the beach, here's the rules. I'm drawing a line in the sand, literally. And he takes his foot and makes a line between Ariana and Sandoval. And the guys laugh and Sheena does too, but Ariana doesn't. And he, DJ James Kinney's like, that's Ariana's side. And um, that, that boundary, don't go over that line. And Brock's like, your drinks are okay to throw. Just no hard objects. And George is like, Sheena, I got you something. And Sheena's like, what'd you get me? And she's like, another kiss like I did in Vegas. No, he throws her a Capri Sun. Sandoval speaking low. He's like, Saturday, we're going to, I was this, I was going this other night. I met this girl who put on a single event in LA. And George is like, I signed up for it. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. And she was like, what was that? I'm tracking your locations. And DJ James is like, There's go, they're going to a singles event Saturday. Brock and I obviously won't be going. And Schwartz is like, Katie, you want to come? You want me to come with you, Schwartz? Schwartz is like, do you want to be my date? And Brock's like, she's going to go in and leave with somebody. You're going to be stuck there. And Schwartz is like, as long as it's not Max, ironically, I think that's brought us closer together. And Katie's like, how? We're the same, Katie. Katie's like, we're not the same because you were getting it the entire time we were together. And Schwartz is like, from a statistical standpoint, I was pretty faithful. And Katie's like, what are you talking about? 12 years, 365 days a year. That's 4,380. That's almost like nil. I love that Schwartz is literally doing seasons of love. He's like 525,600 minutes. Talk about cheating. I only cheated three days a year. Cheating. Katie's like, that is not. And Schwartz is like, all right, bad joke. Katie's like, Sandoval, did you know they kissed in Vegas? And he points at Sheena and sounds like, yeah, I didn't know about that, dude. We get a flashback to Juicing with Lala at Creation Organics where Schwartz first revealed this last week. And Schwartz is like, apparently I told Sandoval when it happened and I completely forgot when we were riffing the other day. And Lala's like, wow, he's a vault. Anyways, that's so funny on so many levels that Schwartz says when we were riffing the other day, like they're blues men. You're like just cut comics. Like, I love getting around Sandoval and we just riff, dude. We just riff. It's like sketch comedy, dude. It's so funny. It's like good jazz, man. And also Lala complimenting, going, wow, Sandoval's a vault. He really is a good man. Katie's like, dang, you guys really did keep a secret. And by the way, the Sheena thing, tip of the iceberg. I'm telling you, they have all, they know where all the bodies are buried. You know that thing you have with a couple of people that you don't talk to in your life, you know, when you're like, oh, I know where all the bodies are buried. I got all the texts. I got all the voicemails. I got all the like, you know, like you're like, I have all the voice notes. I have everything. You know, you're just like, you know where everything is. Um, it's just, 
Oh God. Anyways, she was like, I literally forgot about that. I buried that shit. Almost every other guy in this group has been flirty with me. You included. She points to Sandoval and Sandoval talks very low and somber. He's like, it's more of like a recipient of flirtness, of flirtiness. I love that. It's so creepy. It's more, it's more of like a recipient of flirtiness. And Brock's like, what, what was that? You told Raquel when you guys started that whole thing. This is Brock being a messy bitch, dude. Santa's like, dude, stop. That's such low hanging fruit, dude. That's not like when me and Schwartz rip, dude, riff. But dude, Brock out of nowhere goes, was that you told Raquel when you guys started that whole thing, huh? And Ariana's like, can you have this conversation not in front of me? Because it's fucking disgusting. And Santa was like, let's do that. And Ariana's like, well, that's on you, not Sheena. And Santa was like, that's not on me, dude. I did not bring this up. And Ariana's like, yeah, well, the conversation matter is disgusting because of you. So maybe have it somewhere else. And George's like, you guys, let's take a breather. Hold on. This is going to be a good beach day. He leans forward and makes the line that James made in the sand deeper. And Brock's like, draw the line again. Hey, guys, where's Lala? And Ariana's like, she had to go to an eye doctor appointment with Ocean. And Katie's like, Sandoval? Yeah. I heard that Anne, Anne's out of a job. And Sandoval's like, I didn't say that to her, dude. And Sheena's like, you didn't fire her? I didn't fire her. And Ariana's like, interesting. I told her to take, you know, let's take a couple days off, dude. And James's like, wait, so Anne's not there at the house to mediate. Then who does that for you right now? And Ariana's like, I haven't had to cross that bridge yet. Who's looking after Maya when Anne's not there? And Ariana's like, Anne's not Maya's sitter. Do you feel that she's safe? And Ariana's like, I do currently right now. Yes, good, good. And Schwartz is like, you guys are both great dog and cat parents. And Ariana's like, I mean, that's just blatantly false. I mean, also, remember last year when uh, Ariana's uh, grandma died, remember? And remember that, too, with the dog? Like, and and Sandoval being weird with the dog last year, and that was, like, one of the weekends when he did cheat on her, and he was being weird with the dog back then, too. Sandoval thinks of himself and not other people and not other animals. Um, Ariana's like, well, I'm a dog and cat parent. Shorts is like, what does that mean? And Ariana's like, they're mine. And James is like, do you agree that when she says the pets are hers, Sandoval? And Sandoval pauses. He's like, no. And Ariana's like, I paid the adoption fees. And James is like, it doesn't matter. And Ariana's like, I paid the adoption fees. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And Ariana's like, I paid the adoption fees, so I bought her. And DJ James Kennedy, the Sandoval's like, are you going to fight for her? And Sandoval's like, uh, James, I don't know, man. And Allie's like, Ariana paid the adoption fee. And Ariana's like, so that's it. And Sandoval mumbles to no one. It's the one bill that Ariana paid, dude. Ariana and her talking heads like, Maya's my dog. I pay for everything that has to do with her. I'm the only one who's ever taken her for a walk. I'm the only one that's ever given her a bath. Suck my dick. And Santa was like, according to your rules, Ariana, since you like applied for the adoption papers and paid for it and did all that stuff. And Ariana's like, don't speak to me. Don't speak to me. Stop speaking to me. And Santa was like, it's my friend that found the house and my people that did the loan. And I did it. Stop speaking to me. Like literally stop speaking to me. You're speaking speaking to me, dude. You did it first, dude. You stop speaking to me, dude. And Sandoval and I talking to him is like, anything I do or say is obviously a trigger for Ariana. I had this delusional idea that we would be even more civil than Tom and Katie. What a fucking idiot. The way you romanticized your breakup, like you'd even be better at it. No, you're worse. You're much worse. Choke on that. And bro, bro like of all just gets up and walks away i just thought this too like brock brock kind of comes like he's kind of like mr miyagi he's like come on here's what you gotta do wax on wax off come on yeah all right the wax on the wax off he's like teaching these little life lessons it's so weird sandoval continues on a talking day he's like that ain't nothing watch how civil ariana and i are gonna be yeah delusional and Lala finally arrives. She's like, hey, how is everybody? By the way, Lala arrives with Logan, not Logan, Cochran, Ariana's BFF, Logan No. And if Logan No looks familiar, he, she always hangs out with, uh, he always hangs out with Lala. But remember back in the day, he was DJ James Kennedy's best buddy. Remember that? And he's the one, remember, that had the whole storyline that DJ James Kennedy and Logan No made out, remember? Remember during the gay pride, I think it was that whole season. And then allegedly Logan, Noah and DJ James Kennedy had a falling out that was pretty nasty. And there was an allegation that DJ James Kennedy, I think got rough with Logan. No, but it is interesting because Lala, you know, hangs out with Logan, but I'm just saying these people all, it's just wild, man. 
these people, you always have a chance with these people. Nobody ever holds like a long-term grudge. I mean, they all, it's, it's such a weird, this isn't how friendships are supposed to be. It just really truly isn't. Anyways, um, Lala's like, wait, what's going on? And Ariana's like, he's literally trying to sit here and say all kinds of shit. And Lala's like, what is he saying to you? And I was, Ariana's like, I will not do this again. You guys keep doing this. And Schwartz is like, sorry, it wasn't my idea. And Ariana's like, literally, he sits there and talks shit. He's the one who fucking ruined my entire fucking life. Lala and I talk and he goes, what the fuck did I just walk into? And Ariana's like, can you do me a favor? Keep him away from me. And Brock's like, we've done that. He's over here with his tail between his legs all summer. Oh, Brock, should we feel bad for him? And Ariana's like, not between his legs because he's talking shit. And Brock's like, under his voice because his tail is between his legs. And Ariana's like, well, we can hear. And Schwartz is like, listen, when we go to the next spot, me and Tom will like, go sit somewhere else. Ariana's like, he's never going to fucking get it. And Lala's like, what happened? Ariana's like, he feels comfortable talking shit and none of you guys put him in check. It's really disrespectful. James in a talking head's like, I'm not saying Ariana needs to forgive and forget, but I just think maybe it would be better if Ariana released some of this anger. It probably is consuming a lot of her life. It just, I feel she would be more at peace if it was released. And Ariana's like, you guys got to step up to this man. And be like, bro, shut the fuck up. You got to step in as men because he is such a misogynist. He requires men because that's who he respects to put him in his place and say, dude, you got to shut the fuck up. I can't fucking take it because you're the one in the wrong. And Brock's like, you think he's not taking it? He left. This is where I'm like, Brock, you don't get it sometimes. And Lala's like, you also have to remember he's going to be in defense mode. Anything you say that's in earshot. And Ariana's like, I don't care. Tell him to shut the fuck up. Lala, I don't need you to play devil's advocate. And Lala's like, I'm not playing devil's advocate. I don't think I'm playing devil's advocate. And Ariana's like, the devil has enough advocates. And Lala and I talking heads like, I understand that he was an uber douche. Like this was the most devastating breakup. But at what point do you just choose inner peace? He didn't win. Look at his life. You won. I don't know, Lala, maybe a couple years from now, didn't you just try to discover your softer side? Is that maybe when we start discovering that? I'm just confused. You know, like you, it's like everybody goes on their own path. Everybody's on their own time frame. But yeah, sure. Let's go with three and a half months that Lala thinks that Ariana should get over it. Ariana's like, he's never going to fucking be sorry, remorseful, or one fucking iota of any of that. And what do you think I'm going to do? Sit here and have the best fucking beach day ever? And Brock's like, no. And Ariana's like, but do I have to fucking sit here like this and hear his jabs at me? What do you expect? What do you expect? So this was it. This is what you get. This is what you get when they get scenes. It's darkness. It's just darkness. And no previews for next week, even though we did get a couple of like scenes today I saw where Ariana actually has a very emotional scene with Sheena and Lala, where she actually does cry on camera about this. And it actually, it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, it's like it is, she is coming out more with her feelings. But I think what she says right there is like one of these people, you got to put him in check and it has to come from a guy because he literally does seem to hate a lot of these women. And I think a guy might be able to really, maybe it is Brock, if Brock could fucking understand what's actually going on. But yeah, I mean, he did so many bad things and he just doesn't get it, but she nails it on the head. He requires men because that's who he respects to put him in his place and say, you got to shut the fuck up. But why should Ariana keep putting herself in this? And by the way, I don't know this for, I don't know this at all, but like, I keep thinking about what happens at the very end of the reunion that quits. I mean, that's my hope, but at the end of the day, I don't think she would because if they're going to do another season, it's an easy paycheck. I mean, it's not an easy paycheck. You have to put yourself through this, but it's a paycheck, but also NBC universal. Remember they actually are part of doing love Island. Also Lopez versus Lopez is a sitcom that NBC universal produces and Sheena and Brock got a little part on that. So I feel like NBC universal is giving out little gifts to each of these Vanderpump rules cast members. Now the love Island one, that's a big one. And I don't think that's a gift because I think Ariana earned that dead to rights. I mean, she earned the shit out of that, but I do think they are trying to make other people in the Vanderpump rules cast happy. Um, that's just, this is a thought. I just noticed that Lopez versus Lopez was NBC Universal as well. So I thought that was interesting. Anyway, so let's go to a little bit of the Vanderpump Rules after show. And this is where you get a lot of information. It truly is 
fascinated in this weird way. But anyways, Ariana kind of goes into, uh, you know, Sandoval on numerous occasions would leave doors open, doors unlocked. He invaded her privacy by going into a room unauthorized, uh, put the locked, you know, locked the dog in there for three plus hours. And the only reason that she got to the emergency vet is because Anne had heard her upstairs whimpering and let her out. Like if it had been a busier day and she hadn't come home when she'd come home, who knows what it would have happened. And interviewer goes, you called him a dog murderer. And Ariana goes, attempted. Um, Sheena's like, in the after show, they do all these like split scenes, you know? So Sheena's paired up with Kristen Doty. And Sheena's like, you know, locked her in and as a dog would with leftovers, food, chicken wings, the bones, the smell, all of that. She ate a lot of it. And Kristen Doty whispers, I didn't know how, I just know how it happened because he's not aware of his surroundings. It's just weird. Yeah, Tom's not aware of his surroundings unless he's aware of himself. And Sheena goes, I think the question is, did he do it on purpose and in the argument? And Kristen's like, no, I just think he's a moron. Like, I don't think Sandoval did this on purpose. I don't. I just think he doesn't think of other people. Uh, Sandoval's like, it was either me or Anne that left the door open. Basically, I don't know. I take responsibility. Yeah, you don't take responsibility responsibility if you say it could be you and Anne. That's not taking responsibility. And then Jax is in the scene with San Sandoval. And Jax is like, if it was Anne, she admitted to it, would she have called Anne a dog murderer? And Schwartz is like, no, she wouldn't because she doesn't fucking hate Anne. And Jax is like, is the dog okay? And Sandoval's like, yes. And Jax is like, the dog is fine. That's all that matters. Sandoval shows a picture of Maya stain on the sofa that looks like Italy left from pooping out orange paintballs. She ate from Sandoval saying he left them on the floor and she got to them. And they all laugh. Oh my God, this dog, the dog's insides. And Lala's like, Ariana wants to blame Sandoval. And yeah, he shouldn't have been in the room, right? But I think like someone who is like clean and a grown person and also has done an advertisement for how to throw things away and take things to the trash, you should know how to do that. And then Jax is like, having a dog and leaving things laying around, but having a child, no. I have to be careful with every single thing I do for whatever. Not with my wife, but everything. God knows. If he gets something in his mouth or walks through the door, no, no. But before I had a kid, yeah, I left my fucking shit everywhere. So Jax, you know, father of the year, Christian and her scene is like, I don't care if the roles were reversed. I'm going to say it's not the fault of Ariana for leaving food in her room when her dog isn't there. Just be aware that there's food out. And she was like, I'm very OCD and I do not eat in my bed. So like for me, if Brock leaves candy wrapper next to his bed, I'll lose my shit. I'll be like, ants are going to get that. That's just me. Regardless, Tom should have messaged her. He never should have entered. Yes, exactly. The interview interviewer, which is producer Jeremiah is like, Schwartz, you got on to Katie about hooking up with your best friend, Max. And Schwartz is like, it was weird. It was weird. It was funny though. I found it funny. If that would have happened two weeks after our divorce, I wouldn't have been mad. And Sam's like, I would not feel right about that, dude. And George is like, that was overboard. And Jax is like, nine guys out of 10. And you being that one would not. Regardless, if I dated the girl three years ago, two years ago, one year ago, there would be a little bit of like, uh, but I guess in our group, it doesn't really apply. And then Jack Schwartz and Sandoval all laugh and high five like douches. And Schwartz is like, oh, we're so desensitized. That's truly, that's the thesis statement. We're all so desensitized. We do horrible things to each other. And we don't even feel it. Jax is like, you're not supposed to do that. Well, I've done that. And Sam was like, I would feel really weird if you hooked up with Ariana. And oh man, you want to see short? You want to see Sandoval's head spin? Have Jax hook up with Rachel? Hey Rachel, I know you sometimes listen. Fuck Jax Taylor, do it, do it, do it. Um, Sandoval's like, but that was weird. Like hooking up with Katie, I would never, dude. Katie would even touch you with my dick, dude. Schwartz is like, maybe it was misrepresented. I don't care. I was just like caught off guard. It was like more of a WTF moment, but there was no anger or resentment towards Max or Katie zero. But I had to acknowledge the hypocrisy because you know, she really did like scorch the earth. Like after that kiss in Mexico, she like burned it down our whole friendship or whatever was left of it and katie's like wouldn't it have been lovely if we could have kept that nice boundary rule for one another but tom took a giant shit on that so this is katie's scene and interviewer was like was max a revenge bang after you had found out that he had kissed sheena and katie's like no but that really was divine timing though james in his scene is like after a revenge bang no one goes around town screaming that was revenge no one does it it's like unspoken okay so it happened so let's just leave it at that right no one need to to say if it was a fucking revenge bang. Of course it was. And Kristen Doty's like, I don't think it was at all. I think 
you know, Katie was horny. Max was single. And Sheena's like, I think Katie had a thing for him for a while. It was just that night. Coincidentally, it happened. But I think it was inevitable. Honestly, I saw the way they both looked at each other. And I knew it was like, and Kristen's like sexual tensions, flirtatious. And she just like, like it was the forbidden fruit. What was like, it was like, they were like into each other and they had to take a bite. And Kristen's like, well, if you, I love this. Kristen and Sheena have both hooked up with the Max Boyans and they're talking about it. This is so weird. Ooh. Sheena's like, ultimately, I think she was attracted to him. He was attracted her and they finally just had to get it out of their system yeah get the poison out anyways um james is like i don't judge katie for that look even if it was a revenge bang good on her do you know what i mean thoughts did make out with raquel and it was like right in front of everyone if i was katie i'd be pissed too and knowing katie's personality you know she's very you know she's kind of a badass a little fiery she's gonna be pissed but then when she went and banged max hey i mean fucking cutthroat that's legendary moves everyone stopped downgrading it fucking savage shoo let's go katie i love katie well, man, times have changed. The inter interviewer is like, things between Sandoval and Ariana come to a tipping point. And James is like, I've never seen that side of Ariana before. And Brock's like, the police were going to get called. And James is like, oh my God, dude, that would have been too much. Schwartz is like, her level of fury and rage. That was intense. I saw like in her eyes, like a fiery disdain for you. Yeah, dude. Of course. <laughs> oh my God. These people are. It's, it's just never going to end. I'm just, I'm going to. I'm an old man just yelling at the same things every week. This is insane. Sam was like, it was a total accident. <laughs> Talking about the dog. I was like, Raquel, it was a total accident with Raquel. Jax, uh, you know, Jax is like, that's why I'm saying be upset, being, be angry. But and George's like, this is reminiscent of the pasta moment. Uh, I don't really think it's about Maya, the dog. DJ James Kennedy's like, she's got some fucking anger too because of how Tom was sort of cheating on her when Charlotte was gone. I mean, it goes so deep. Yeah, that's it. Last season when Charlotte died, remember? Fucked up. Anyways, um, now Brittany is there. Um, Brittany's like, I, she's still reeling from everything at that moment. And it makes me feel sad for her because that feeling of like hatred and stuff, it's just so much. And it almost does more damage to you than just try to let things go. And Lala's like, you can just tell that she's like very, she's like on a hundred still. There's been like no come down from the anger. And Schwartz is like, it's not my place to tell her where or when she shouldn't be healed. By the way, it isn't your place. Good Schwartz, but it's Lala's place, I guess. Sheena's like, it hurt me to see that she's still hurting so much. I don't know. So they're going back and forth with this. And Ariana is like, uh, like whatever, being butthurt about me, being mad about that. Okay. And Katie's like, you can choke. And the interview is like, there was a bit of fi a fight at the beach day. And Kristen's like, well, didn't that happen last year on Vanderpump Rules? Brock's like, I'm probably an antagonist. But after having that response at his house, I felt like this group still needed to be forced into having some kind of conversations with Tom. But clearly, we can't have those conversations yet. Not my finest hour sometimes, but I think that's just who I am. Like, I'd rather have an uncomfortable conversation than not have a conversation about it and sit there. Producers, pets, it's not just la la. Brock's coming for the gold. And James is like, Tom doesn't want Kitty or Maya. Let's be real. He's probably just fucking being argumentative and being an asshole. Uh, <laughs> and James is like, there's Ariana's pets, though. They're Ariana's pets. So you can kind of tell, right? It's not rocket science. You can kind of tell in most cases, like which one belongs with who. And Sandoval, Sandoval and his thing, he's like, Kitty, I understand, because she's had Kitty since she was a kitten. She found her in New Jersey in a parking lot. I did really take care of Kitty a lot, though, dude. And Ariana and her scene, she's like, he would love for everyone in the world to think that I'm the big bad wolf and he's poor little Red Riding Hood. Had to put up with her for so long. I don't think for the nine months since we broke up, managed to write a book, win third place on Dancing with the Stars, get my ass on Broadway. You know, like, yeah, I don't do shit. I did all of that. So, you know, direct things to Sandoval calling her like a lazy piece of ass. And it's like, look, look what all I did. And that's what you keep doing, Ariana. That shuts everybody fucking up. Just keep doing what you're doing. Let, let Sandoval rant and rave and get angrier and angrier. All you have to do is what you're doing. And Katie's like, what would you do today, Sandoval? Get your nails done? And Ariana's like, he would love for me to be run out of this group, out of this town, and out of him having to answer for his own actions. He would love that. He would love nothing more for everyone to find out what a big old fucking bitch I am. 
And Shannon was like, we got Maya together and I named her, dude. And Maya and I have a spot. So <laughs> I would love like we named her, dude. What'd you name her? I forgot, dude. Uh, oh, Maya, dude. Yeah. I've had such a very special relationship and we would cuddle in the morning. We would like play hide and seek. I would hide my laxative pills and then she would find them or <laughs> I don't know, or vice versa. Who knows? Um, I love Maya. So just, I don't know, because she paid for the, I paid the bills for the house for the past nine months. Do I own the house now? That'd be cool. I don't know. Would the adoption fees like 300 dollars uh she is like i just think sanibel needs to learn how to shut the fuck up about the bills about who did what who said what it just doesn't matter you hurt her in more ways than one she didn't pay her electric bill last month who fucking cares and santa was like i miss her dude i miss her a lot talking about maya i miss running around with her she'd run away from me try to hide from me i just miss running <laughs> very scared of me just i miss that i miss it george is like that's rich considering you tried to murder her and he, it's so funny. And Sandoval shoots him a dirty look. He's like, sorry, we're riffing, dude. And then it gets to Anne and job, you know, the job responsibilities talking about Anne. And uh, Ariana's like, the thing is, these things are not abnormal for him. You know, just kind of leaving shit all around. It just seems like so inappropriate to me about her cleaning up after the pool party with the sticky stuff. It's just weird. And then I feel like I'm being gaslit into things it, like it should be appropriate. And Sandoval in his scene is like, and tidies up, dude. Whatever from the night before. Dishes, cups, whatever. Glassware, whatever. And tidies up. And then it's like checking emails, going through scheduling, stuff like that. She gets on the phone with customer service. That's another thing in her job, this description. Because I hate getting on the phone with like customer care or tech support. Like that is a nightmare to me. But she doesn't touch dirty laundry though. And the interviewer's like, Schwartz, have you ever thought about getting an assistant? He's like, no, I'm pretty self-sufficient. Have you seen my plant collection? I mean, my dream scenario is just to have someone who's a home chef and someone who does my laundry i like doing everything else in my life <laughs> and then he's like i hate laundry with every fiber of my being i hate it more than anything in this planet except except for mayonnaise i hate doing laundry yeah but it's nice to have an assistant and then ariana's like you create filth you think that's totally cool that you think Anne, who is not a maid has to clean up that stuff for you you just sleep in the next day you don't do any of it yourself like fine that's a lifestyle that you think is acceptable it's not how i want to live and the interviewer is like let's talk about Anne." and sounds like santa was like, at a really delicate fra fragile time in my life she asked ariana to work for her and jackson's like as she was working for you yeah dude Literally, like on a normal Monday, she comes in wearing a suit, which she never does. And George is like, were there cameras up? Yeah. Okay, that's why. Putting on a performance. Yeah. And Ariana's like, Ariana's like I need an assistant. Things are falling through the cracks. And I, I I, only know one assistant. And so I thought I should ask for recommendations. But then I feel like she was at a point where she was just so unhappy with Sandoval. It was a lot of pressure because I felt really bad because I didn't want her to think that I was going to poach her. But I also didn't want her to think that I wasn't hiring because I didn't think she would do a good job. Like I didn't want her to feel bad in any way. And then she ended up being fired anyway. So a lot of worrying for nothing. I probably should have just poached her, honestly. But she kind of admits there that was kind of a setup scene but she never would have done it but like she felt bad because she knew Anne was unhappy and she also didn't want Anne to think that she you know didn't do a good job because she did um Jax is like can I just ask one question Sandoval did you make her sign an NDA and Sandoval's like yeah okay thank god that's the smartest move you've ever made dude and Sandoval's like she started a podcast and Jax is like what and Sam was like, it's called, I signed an NDA. And Jax is like, so she signed an NDA. What could she possibly talk about? I don't know, but she's about to, no, she's like, what could she possibly talk about? And Sam was like, I don't know, dude, but she's about to get a letter from my lawyer. And Jax is like, oh my God, it's annoying because she's like low key saying things that aren't true. Like I saw in some interview, she was like, oh yeah. Like I would go there and like Ariana would already be up and doing stuff because she's always busy. And Tom is like, you know, doing this and I, I don't know. I'm like, girl, you know that Ariana would leave her bedroom until at least one in the afternoon. Like I was always up, always like made her coffee, like did this. I went to bed after her and I woke up before her every day, dude. Santa was like, it's annoying to me because Ariana never wanted her around. She would be annoyed that Anne was over. Not so much at Anne, but the fact that somebody was over. Yeah, man. Sometimes people like privacy at their house. Who knows? Crazy thought. And I'm like, because she does think for me, she waters Ariana's plants. You know, she keeps everything stocked in the house. Not the pins and batteries, right, buddy? It hurt, dude. It made it seem like she was very publicly, you know, going to Katie and Ariana of all people. That's like a huge, I feel like a conflict of interest. It seems like a betrayal, dude. He would know what betrayals are like. But yeah, I get this. In a professional setting, yeah, it, it does suck. Like the Anne thing, 
I get it. I get it. You know, but also Anne didn't want to work for you. And she seems really nice about the whole thing still. I mean, you know, so it sucks. But this is what, see, now do you get it? You know, you caused a bad situation. It's not good. Anyways, we go in and some of the people from the Valley uh, start talking as well. And Jason, uh, who is Janet's husband, he said this amazing thing that I was like, this is why this guy, Jason just seems like a good all around guy. He goes, generally when there's a situation like, you know, Tom, I tend to bridge gaps with those people, but with Ariana and Tom, I'm like, you know, with what he did to me is just at a level where if Ariana doesn't want to be around him and she doesn't want her friends around him, like I totally get it. And if you want to hang out with him, then you have to face the repercussions of her not wanting to hang out with you. I mean, just being around them before everything broke, the way that the three of them would hang out and just be like, I love you. I love you. Always up on each other for them to have been hooking up on the side the entire like seven, eight, nine months is like sick to me. It's hard for me to ever get over that personally because if he treats someone like that, who's a person he's in a relationship with for 10 years, has respect for, is, you know, in love with, then like, why would I want to continue a relationship where I'm going to get closer to someone who's like that? Like, what's he going to do? I mean, he doesn't care about relationships in that way. And then Janet says he does not feel remorseful, genuinely remorseful. And I think if he found remorse and expressed that, he would be in a much better position with the rest of the group. But it feels like he's really upset by the reaction instead of really being upset by his own actions. Boom. How many times have I said this, you guys? Exactly. Exactly. Janet and Jason, you nailed it completely. Nailed it. Exactly. And in fact, nailed it so much is that is where we're going to end today. Um, this is already way too long. And I got to tell you folks, I, I know this was the worst podcast I've ever done. This was not funny. I got through it. I probably did, shouldn't have, and just shouldn't have done it, but this was pretty much zero laughs. There were some audio problems in the beginning. So this one just sucked a giant suck a dick as Kristen Doty would say, but thank you for always being there for me. I thought this would be more fun for me, but it just wasn't. Um, I'm going to get to the Valley recap at some point. And I also want to talk about Lala's podcast give them la la with Heather McDonald. So I want to throw those two things together, but I don't know if I'll be able to get that, but hopefully I get to Ohio and get to see my grandma and thank you. But uh, yeah, I'm sorry. This, this kind of sucked, but uh, I, I guess I'm glad I did it. So hopefully you found some enjoyment, but yeah, one of my worst ones, but we'll get back to, uh, to good stuff. So don't give up on the show. We'll get back to good stuff, but yeah, not my best, but I hope you guys have the best Thursday ever. I'll talk to you very soon. Bye guys.